Welcome back to the channel where I got some creepy and conspiracy TikTok videos just to share with you. All right, let's get to it. So this video popped up on my For You page last night. Read this one. Next generation wireless technology may leverage the human body for energy. What? Say what? Watch this video and you can decide in the comments. They want to use you as Wi-Fi. Well, actually, Li-Fi. They want to use your energy and light to actually send information through to create a new Wi-Fi system called Li-Fi. 6G antenna, plus the human body for energy, and even other things like copper bracelets and such to really, really use you for antennas. Now, this is no tinfoil hat, and I'm going to give you an anti-tweak receipt at the end here in just a few seconds, but it really makes me think what's going on in the world, what's possible. Awareness really is key. You think ever since they put that Nintendo controller in my hand, that some sort of off-world iRobot agenda entity kind of had that in mind. You know, the iPhone invention story, if you've never heard, is really interesting. Basically, Steve Jobs went to the wilderness to a cave with a guru in India, went to some sort of occult initiation ritual, talked to some spirits, and came back with some crazy technology that he said was meant to be spread all over the world. Aside from just the natural etheric electrical universe we live in and just what's naturally scientifically possible, it's really important to be grounded and know what's going on and who you are as a person. That's where the hope comes from. But if you want your anti-tweak receipt, here you go. Pause to read. Pause to read. Tap the screen. Pause to read. Pause to read. Pause to read. This is crazy. Like, this is absolutely crazy that we're going to be our own Wi-Fi. Like, what? I'm kind of speechless from what I just saw. That's fucking crazy. Um, makes me not even want to have my phone now. Stay safe, y'all. Well, people being in high places like Puff Daddy. True. Evil don't exist down here. It exists up here. It lurks down here, but it exists up here. And we're all of us down here trying to go up there with evil. Right. Almost everything up here is evil. Jay-Z, Tyler Perry. Man, we just call you the can't people get up here if you ain't evil, my niggas. It's a glass ceiling for those that's not evil. You can only go that high if you evil. Strong words. Oof. You can only go that high if you evil. Speaking true. <laughs> because that's where evil exists. Charleston White came out with the truth about P. Diddy, Jay-Z, and Tyler Perry years before things started dropping. And he speaks on how they have to do evil things to even get to that high position and stay in that position of power. And it's pretty crazy that after this interview, we learned everything about what went on with P. Diddy and how evil he actually is. And we also had some interesting allegations about Tyler Perry. And Charleston White is not the only person that have said things like this. I think it's pretty crazy that uh, he said those names years before some of this, these allegations of things are, are coming out. Like I said, this is the year that uh, people are getting exposed. I really think 2024 is the year for that but uh let me know what you guys think leave a comment below let's get on to the next video another conspiracy theory that has me questioning literally everything is the one that says that post malone isn't actually singing his own music it is widely known that post malone is a heavy smoker he smokes during interviews he smoked at parties when parties were a thing mm. we all know he doesn't try to hide it since he smokes so much and smoking damages your voice and lungs people are confused as to how his voice sounds as good as it does Probably because it's not him. People have speculated <laughs> that the person that posts songs for him is actually Justin Bieber. It is said that when Post wants to record and release a song, they have Justin Bieber go into the booth, record the song, they slow down the song or lower the pitch, or a combination of the two. Here's an example of one of Post's songs, and they raise the pitch. And here's well, another one. Suspicious. What do you guys think? Personally, I think that uh, I'm a little suspicious, but I'm auto-tune can make things just sound amazing. They give you the perfect pitch, so I'm not too sure about that conspiracy or not. Let's get to the next video. 
Mandela effects that are gonna make you question your reality. People all over the internet, including myself, remember there being a robber emoji. And it looked something I like don't. this. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. never existed. I swear I remember seeing it. The Wendy's girl never had braids. This is the old logo and this is the newer one. As you can see, they've always been pigtails. But what's really weird is if you search Wendy's Halloween costume, pictures of wigs with braids come up. So why do we all collectively remember the wrong thing? Oh, and the Fruit of the Loom logo never had a cornucopia. I'm sorry. The whole Mandela effect, I think people just got really bad memory. But, you know, some people believe that uh, we changed timelines of 2016 after Harambe got shot. <laughs> I said it's not a possibility, but the timeline has been very interesting and not such a good way after that situation i'm just saying let's get to the next video that means they miss you and on those nights that you can't sleep that means you're awake in someone else's dream oh god during your fourth and fifth hour of sleep you're prone to the most cognitive dreams you experience premonition which is basically a strong feeling that something's gonna happen and the person you have or had a connection with subconsciously astral travels into your dreams because they're thinking of you and they miss you and don't worry if you can't sleep at night because japanese legend says when you're having one of these nights it's because you are awake and active in someone else's dream Dis that would explain why sometimes i have a hard time going to sleep can y'all please stop dr stop dreaming about me thanks in ducktales we see this poster in the back ask about illuminati mm. oh no 101 dalmatians this sign right here oh no in the Lion King? Oh no! <laughs> Who would do this? All these <laughs> this girl's funny, man. You see it here. Oh no! This one's a stretch, but you can read that. Oh no 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 no! You see Hans in the Wanted poster back here in Big Hero Six. That one's not bad. The thing that's crazy about that. Back in the day, I'll have been like, Nah, I don't think that's true. But you know what? After all those subliminal messages that we found out that were in Dis Disney media, especially in the '90s. I definitely can see it. I also know your brain try to recognize patterns and things too. So what you got what do you guys think about that one? Conspiracy theory that you a thousand percent believe in. The ancient civilizations on Earth were far more advanced than we're being told, and that one of them possibly even thrived before our oceans even existed. Stay with me. In the spring of twenty thirteen, a gentleman was sailing his yacht around the Azores Islands, an autonomous region of Portugal when he discovered a large pyramid underwater. They would find that this architectural marvel was 60 feet tall and bigger around than a football field. So naturally, I had to dig deeper. And as I did, I kept seeing pictures of it circled on Google Earth. And of course, I had to go find it for myself. It's right here. But as I was checking it out, I thought to myself, well, where there's one, there's gotta be more, right? Well, look right above it. Two more pyramids. From there, it was over. I was up all night, scanning the entire ocean floor. And what I found absolutely blew my mind. That there were large clusters of what could be potential pyramids at the depths of the ocean. All my man doing his homework, going thousands. out a rabbit hole. Do you see it? As I was scanning the ocean floor the other night, I spotted this. So I zoomed in on it. To me, it looks just like the statues of giants from Easter Island. Then I spotted another face right next to it, surrounded by idols. Check them mm. out. Yeah, Look at That weird. was definitive. Here's another one. But the most interesting part... The statues I found were just north of Hawaii, over 4,000 miles away from Easter Island. But I wanted more evidence, so I went back to Easter Island and checked around it. Notice these circular structures. A number of them, blurred out. And sure enough, blurred out. Another one, another one, another one. They're a circular structure with a peak at the top. So I came to the conclusion that this civilization of people existed here and north of Hawaii. So I thought to myself, they had to travel to get there. What path did they take? So after coming to the conclusion Man, going down the a rabbit hole. lived on Easter Island, also lived north of Hawaii, I figured they must have traveled to get there. So I looked closely, and look at this. The path. heads west and north. Not only okay. that, they actually had a path going from Easter Island back to South America. You can literally see the beaten path going to the land. Then I quickly noticed, that looks like around the area of Peru. And that's when my light bulb just went off. If you didn't know this, Paracas, Peru, is where Julio Otello in 1928 discovered over 300 elongated skulls on a desert peninsula. So I bet you know what I did next. Paracas, Peru. What a coincidence. Straight to it. The elongated skull people of Paracas, Peru were probably behind the pyramids and the large idols. Oh, and one last thing. Don't their statues kind of something found on Mars? Guy went down a rabbit hole. 
think about that is uh, the land of Mew. It was a book written. I can't remember about who that talked about it at a huge mass of land in the, um, that part of the planet between South America to like Asia, something like that. Maybe what happened was it just uh, got went underwater somehow. I mean, up and down a sea level all the time. Maybe that's why he, he found underwater pyramids and things like that. It's the only conclusion I can come up to. Land of Mew. But one simulated the international response to the outbreak of the novel, novel coronavirus two months before COVID-19. Uh, the COVID-19 outbreak became international news and a few months before it would be declared a pandemic. Uh, the John Hopkins Center for Health and uh, Security summary of the exercise closely resembles, in fact, mirrors exactly the actual COVID-19 scenario, including apparent foreknowledge of so-called asymptomatic spread, etc. The Cladex and Co uh, Event 201 simulations anticipated every aspect of the COVID crisis, notably the responses by governments, health agencies, conventional media, social media, and elements of the public. The simulated responses and their effects included worldwide lockdowns. This is in advance a simulation, the collapse of businesses and industry, the adoption of biometric surveillance technologies, an emphasis on social media censorship to combat misinformation and disinformation, the flooding of social and legacy media with authoritative sources, widespread riots, remember the summer of love, and mass unemployment. Of course, all of these things took place with the COVID crisis. These premonitory exercises and other COVID curiosities have contributed to the pandemic narrative uh, I'm not saying I hold this, but this, I mean, this is out there. This exists, this pandemic narrative, which is speculation that the COVID crisis may have been staged by global elites uh, to, uh, centered around the WEF and the UN as an alibi for instituting the Great Reset. Event to so when I found that, I had to find more videos of the actual event. This is from, this is on the WHO site itself. Is that people all stakeholders realize pretty quickly just how underprepared we are and just how much is possible when we work together. And that the individual actions of any government or company won't add up to a proper global response. When we walked into the room in New York, if you would have asked, are you, do you think the world is prepared for a pandemic? I think everyone around that table would have said no. But it's when they walked out I think it's when we really knew that if we are going to get ready, we need to have operationalized and integrated public-private cooperation that we haven't. All I got to say about that is, while I find it very suspicious that in November they did that in 2019, and a few months later, we had a world pandemic. Uh, but I leave the decision up to y'all to what y'all want to believe. Just wanted to share it to y'all. Let's get to the next video. Okay, tell me a story about something that you cannot explain. Yeah, so, uh, spring of 2017, my classmates and I, three of my classmates and I, we took a trip to Paris. Trip went fine. On the last day of the trip, we, all four of us, piled into a car and headed to the airport. Now, somewhere in the airport, and I don't remember this completely, I just know at some point I wasn't near them. I think maybe I went off to find food or something. But at some point they were like texting me, Katie, Katie, are you, um, we're boarding. And at the 12th hour, <laughs> I made it to the terminal. In fact, I remember thinking that the ceiling was so cool that I took this photo. This is a photo from me sitting on the floor waiting for my section of the plane to board. And all the girls were there. I remember walking on that aircraft past two of my friends and sitting like three rows behind them next to my other friend, classmate, whatever. Flight went fine. And then the four of us took a taxi back to the apartments we were staying in while we were in school. And even more so, I distinctly remember in the WhatsApp, the girls talking about Let's go home and change and go to the beach. They wanted to go to the beach after the flight. It's, it's, it's just, I don't still have it, but that happened. Okay. Two days later in class, I walk in and the two girls who were seated three rows in front of me 
They're talking about how they missed the flight back from Paris. They're talking about how they missed the flight, and they had to take a second flight, okay. and they came back by themselves. And my other friend is sitting there conferring with them. And I'm like, they were three rows in front of us. You guys went to the beach. I did not go because I needed to sleep, but I was in the taxi on the ride back into the city. And to this day, I have no idea why they remember those two missing the flight. And I remember all four of us being on that flight. And then even have memories of what we did after the flight, like being in the taxi together and going to the beach or them going to the beach and talking about it in the group chat. There's, there's like a discrepancy. I don't know, bro. I just. That is insane that that happened to her. That's some freaky stuff. We are all very aware, many of my recent videos have revolved around debunking conspiracy theories that giants exist. Now that I am comfortably settled back into my home in Maine for school, I've decided I'm going to cover something a little bit more fun, and that is one of my favorite archaeological hoaxes of all time, the Cardiff Giant. This big fella right here is the Cardiff Giant. This 10-foot-tall behemoth was found in the backyard of a barn in New York State, and the man who discovered it used it as evidence to prove that giants had once walked the Earth. And a lot of people believed him. They believed him so much, actually, that he was able to make quite a small fortune off of showing it off. Well, the man who discovered the giant set up a tent over its remains and charged about $5 in today's money for people to come see it. And it was so profitable in the first day that he doubled the price to just about $10 for oh, people just crazy. to come look at it. But the scientific world was skeptical. First person to analyze it and realized that it was probably fake was a geologist who realized that there is no way a man can be petrified like this because yeah. that's not how rocks work. But for some reason, he still didn't think it was a fake. He just assumed that it was carved a couple hundred years earlier by a priest in order to impress the local indigenous people. And then a paleontologist from Yale got involved and he figured out that it was just made of a giant block of gypsum. Gypsum, which he correctly pointed out, would not still have tool marks in it if it had been buried for several hundred years. Quickly, people were like, wait a second, this is definitely not a real giant. But like most stories like this, the truth behind it is actually far more interesting than the hoax. The giant was the brainchild of a creationist named George Hull, who had an argument with an atheist about whether or not giants once walked the earth, as discussed in Genesis. Now, he was not very happy about the conversation he had with this atheist, so he did this. So he combined his spike towards science, as well as a newspaper article he read containing a story about a miner who drank water from a geode and then uh, calcified, uh, and decided to craft one of the best archaeological hoaxes of all time. So Hall had a 10-foot-tall piece of gypsum quarried for him in Iowa, <laughs> but he was very dedicated to his hoax, and he didn't want anyone to know what he was doing, so he told all of the mine workers that he was using it to make a giant statue of Abraham Lincoln. But he didn't do that. But instead, he had the block shipped to Chicago and turned into this by a stonecutter who he made take a vow of secrecy. But these guys were dedicated. They used needles and small tools in order to make it look like the giant had pores on him. They stained it with a bunch of different acids and stuff so it looked older. I mean, these people dedicated to this craft. And then Hull spent $50,000 in today's money shipping this gigantic piece of stone back to his home in New York State. The giant was then buried behind a barn and it remained there for a year. Then in 1869, Hull had two people go back there to dig a well where they conveniently found a giant petrified man. But the giant was popular, so popular in fact that P.T. Barnum made an illegitimate of it, which I guess is a fake of a f and displayed it and made money off it, which is like double fraud, fraud squared. But the ruse was short-lived as the giant was discovered in October of 1869 and it was revealed as a fraud by the man himself in December of 1869. So cracked under pressure pretty quickly. Thanks for listening and I hope to have more of it. I'm mad at all that. Just cause anyone he could have an argument with somebody. I'm mad made a complete hoax. Just because the atheist didn't believe in what he what he believed in, well, that's crazy. The human ego, man. We're here to come up with the next phony baloney crisis to put Americans back where they belong. Well, I'm not Our surprised. Glued to their televisions, too terrified to come skip the commercials. <laughs> well, I think NBC, you are here to listen and not speak. I think we should go with a good old-fashioned public health care. Uh, yeah. A new disease. No one's immune. It's like the summer of the shark, except instead of a shark, it's an epidemic. And instead of summer, it's all the time. Now, I hate to be the guy who derails what everybody else loves. He loves being that guy. But, Janice, we do have standards. This can't be a made-up disease. The only moral thing to do is release a deadly virus into the general public. We do have something we've been holding on to, but it hasn't been tested. Get over here, NBC. <laughs> we certainly believe in testing. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Oh. Wow. <laughs> you really don't like NBC, huh? Oh, yeah. No, we just have to blame it on something. Did you guys know before the pandemic, I forget what organization it was, but I'm pretty sure John Hopkins, they did a test run for um, an outbreak and 
to some people would die, how how well they would, um, I guess, fight against it or whatever. But millions of people died. This happened in, I believe, November of 2019. Don't you guys find that pretty weird that like five months later we that happened? And then we had one of the biggest, I mean, biggest, at least while I've been alive, wealth, like gaps created because of it. Everything is crazy expensive. You know, they try to say because it's inflation. Yeah, inflation plays a part of it to a degree. But let's be real. It's because of greed. It's always greed. It always will be greed. All right, let's get to the next video. Part 11. A man from New Jersey bought a $5 bottle of orange juice from ShopRite, which his wife made him return because it was too expensive. He then decided to buy two Powerball tickets with the refunded money and ended up winning the $300 million jackpot. This person caught the same exact fish a month and a half That's later. Crazy. Harry John Patch was the last surviving soldier from World War I and was briefly the oldest man in Europe. He died at the age of 111 years, one month, one week, and one day. Tom Cruise divorced all three of his ex-wives when they turned 33, and each is 11 years younger than the last. <coughs> the first person to die during the construction of the Hoover Dam was J.G. Tierney on December 20th, 1922. On the same exact day, 14 years later, the last person died. It was J.G. Tierney's son, Patrick. I don't really believe in coincidences to that level, but, you know, that's crazy, though. If you're okay with the existential watching, how real is anything? Our eyes can only see visible light, and that's just 0.0035% of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. So we're blind to over 99% of the world. Not just that, but we have a hole in the back of the eye where the optic nerve exits the eyeball. There are no photoreceptors here, but instead of seeing holes, the brain fills in the blanks with its memory instead of real-time information. Similarly, our hearing range is limited from 20 hertz to around 20,000 hertz. Above and below this, our brain is deaf to those sounds. The world is noisy and we're deaf to most of it. Animals, plants and bugs communicate with each other and it's even thought that plants scream when they're cut emitting ultrasonic screams. Same thing with smell. We've trained dogs to sniff out cancer, Parkinson's and even COVID. But our olfactory neurons are just nowhere near complex enough to decipher these odors. Not just that, but here's something wild. This is the chemical indole. In small concentrations, we associate it with something flowery, but in large concentrations, it smells like poo. What we experience in our reality is just a tiny fraction of the real world due to the evolutionary limitations imposed on our senses. Our brain is basically just winging it. Our brain takes all the information from our sensory organs and the output is just what it thinks is happening and what it thinks you need to know. So technically, we've never actually experienced real life. At best, you've only experienced a heavily... You know, that's really scary to think about. It really is. Because as far as I know, I could have something literally behind me. Since I can't see it or hear it. Maybe, you know, feel it or whatever. It could just be there. It could be the cause of a disease or anything. I would just, you know, never know. That is, to me, that's the most scariest thing. And I think that's why people get afraid of a lot of things because of the unknown. And as far as the plants and ultra ultrasonic sounds, I believe I read a scientific paper about that a couple of years ago saying that, yeah, uh, animals and stuff can hear when um, plants get cut and things like that. So, yeah, I don't know the vegans going to have to spell that. It's part three. The first two parts are on my page. Cleve Baxter was a oh, scientist well, who quit of, the CIA right? because the work he was doing there was hurting people and he wanted to do something more positive. So he retired and developed the polygraph test or lie detector test. It measures electromagnetic responses in the human body and spikes when a human is upset or is lying. One day he decided to put the polygraph test on the leaves of one of his plants. Trying to get a rise out of the plant, he tapped it with a pencil, but nothing happened. Then he got an idea to get his matches and burn the plant. And the second he got that idea, the polygraph went off because the plant sensed his malicious thoughts towards it. And the plant did not calm down again until he- Just like what I was just saying. Anyway, let's keep continuing. Put the matches outside of the room. After recreating this experiment several times, he bought more plants and kept them all hooked up to polygraphs 24 seven so he didn't miss anything. He realized that plants are awake and conscious and are constantly monitoring their environment. Not to mention they have empathic and telepathic abilities. What? He noticed the plants would get depressed every time he left the room and then would perk up again when he came back. 
One day, a man who mows lawns came into Dr. Baxter's office and the plants all started freaking out because they know what this man does for a living. Cleve Baxter cut himself and the plants got stressed out. Then he cut himself purposefully again and again and the plant's stress response was less and less. He coined this a fainting response where the plants kind of faint due to repeated stress and they won't keep having the same reaction to repeating incidents. So he brought in his secretary and cut her hand and the plants freaked out again. The Baxter effect was demonstrated at Yale and MIT. One of the students brought a spider in the room cupped in his hand to see how the plant would react. When he opened his hand, the spider, terrified, ran for its life and the plant started freaking out, scared for this little spider. Cleve Baxter then monitored plant foods like potatoes and apples and discovered they had a stress response to being eaten and watching each other being eaten. He also found that plant foods are calm when you show them gratitude, love, and thank them for their nourishment. This is a practice that native tribes have been doing for millennia. Hey guys, if you guys think that um is true, let me know. And if you guys are interested in uh me doing research on that topic, please let me know because um that's very um interesting to me that plants can do all that, especially they said telepathic. Are we about to um, have the movie The Mist happen? I think that was the movie Mist. It was like I see calculus, calculus. Yeah, let me know. This shit out before we because this one's going to be huge and you're going to want to hear this. Love me some rabbit holes. I'm sure we've all heard of the 9-11 conspiracies that haven't been proven, but this one is all facts. Keep watching because this one's good. This is Larry Silverstein, the owner of the 9-11 buildings when they were attacked and the current owner today. Hmm. Just two months before the attacks, Larry just so happened to take out two insurance claims on the building that both stated terrorist attacks. Oh, yeah. And he just so happened to not come into work today whenever he was known for never missing work. After the attacks, Larry also sued American Airlines for letting the terrorists attack his building. In total, he was paid what? out $5 billion for the attacks. Probably never know the real truth about this, but what we do know is Larry still invests in real estate to this day. So Larry has been heavily invested in Florida and New York, as long as a lot of other people will really just focus on Larry, because he seems to know something that we don't. Larry just refinanced the new building for $465 million with Goldman Sachs. Real estate investors have been heavily investing in these. LEN builds homes. Cube Smart is storage that's blowing up everywhere. Joe is investments and development. Yo, if that's true, just like the first video was saying, I got the guy Charleston White, I think that was his name. The evil is up here, man. And I truly believe it, because that's what the psychopaths and social, well, not sociopaths, just psychopaths are at. They willing to do anything to get to the top. So we've all heard that the burning of the Library of Alexandria in Alexandria, yeah, Egypt, is said to have set humanity to back by Shame. as much as 1,000 years. With the library potentially containing information about civilizations predating the time of Egypt, as well as the time of Babylon or Mesopotamia. It's also speculated that the library may have contained information pertaining or related to the construction methods of the pyramids, which are still unknown. But what is so rarely acknowledged is the fact that we lost potentially even more valuable information about the Mesoamericans during the siege of America by the Spanish. These ancient Americans built massive megalithic cities on similar size to that of ancient Egypt and Babylon. They also invented a method of moving these unbelievably massive megalithic stones up and down mountain ranges, hoisting them up and setting them into place all without ever using the wheel, ox, or even horses. Furthermore, they were also extremely well-educated and intelligent astronomers. And the architecture and layout of their cities acted as a celestial map of their night sky. They also built massive thriving civilizations in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, which was long thought by Europeans to be completely uninhabitable and just impossible. A huge and potentially the most important chapter of our ancient human history lies in Mesoamerica that we have such little knowledge of. I'm Luke Caverns. I really wish I could go back in time just to see what, see how they did some of the things they did, man. I bet some of that ancient technology or the things they knew, man, it would be so helpful in today's world. Did you know that Stranger Things is loosely based off of a true story? Yes, sir. Before Stranger Things became Stranger Things, the first draft of the screenplay was originally called Montauk. The reason it was called Montauk is because it was loosely based off of a conspiracy theory named the Montauk Project. Back in the 90s, a book by a man named Preston Nichols was released titled The Montauk Project Experiments in Time. This book talked about a real-life army base that was supposedly running experiments on children that were allowing them to use telekinetic powers powers to travel through dimensions. Sound familiar? <laughs> At the time, there had been a few theories here and there, especially during the 80s, about this project existing, but this book really boosted it into popularity. 
Preston Nichols is this guy here. He basically said that there was this base called Camp Hero, and this is what it looked like. This is Camp Hero. Look familiar? It was a fairly normal airbase, or so people thought, and then they went underground and discovered scary things. Preston Nichols said that there was a chair, they called it the Montauk chair, and supposedly if you were to sit someone in it that had these uh, telekinetic powers, they would be able to do lots of cool things. One of the things being, if you put a bit of hair in someone's hand, they would be able to feel, see, and hear the person's hair that what? you put in their hand. So for example, you take a lock of my hair and give it to this random person in the chair, they would be able to find me. Sound familiar? Yes, that's what Elle does, essentially. Obviously, they don't use hair in the show. They use just her knowledge of the person, I guess. Anyway, one day, Preston Nichols decided that he was sick of the abuse that was taking place on these kids that were locked up in this facility. They were abused, they would be starved, uh, they would be left in really hot rooms and then really cold rooms. And him and a lot of the other workers at this base decided that they were going to free them. When someone was in this chair, the Montauk chair, they could make things become reality. And their plan was to make something scary appear to get everyone out the base uh, and let these kids go free. However, it somewhat went wrong. Nichols said that one kid that they tried this theory on created a big, large, scary monster that appeared in the base and started destroying things. Sound familiar? <laughs> they couldn't do anything to stop it, so they destroyed all the machinery that they would use on these kids to send it back to its own dimension. This supposedly worked, the base got covered up, uh, it was filled with cement, so there's no existence of it, supposedly. The reason it took so long for Nichols to write this book is because he forgot, and he had these repressed memories that supposedly came to him during the 90s. Then years later, the Duffer Brothers discovered this theory and decided to write a TV show based off of it. There's more to this theory, so if you want a part two, let me know. I'm sure you think it's a pretty good show. I mean, I feel like it got worse after every, the more it went on, but, um, yeah, that's crazy. Um, but how can something like that happen and your memories be so repressed? But man, that is scary. If somebody could use their thoughts and instantly manifest their reality, man, that would be some scary stuff. I say to the charge, if you are a climate change campaigner, but you also travel around the world on a private jet, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> well, I, I, by the gold standard of funding Climeworks to do direct air capture that far exceeds my family's carbon footprint. Sorry, I'm thirsty. And I spend billions of dollars on, on climate innovation. So... You know, should I stay at home and not come to Kenya and learn about farming and malaria? I'm comfortable with the idea that not only am I not part of the problem by paying for the offsets, but I also through the billions that my Breakthrough Energy Group is spending, that I'm part of the solution. Hey, man, if you guys already know what Bill Gates is about, you already know that uh, he ain't about nothing that's that good. And, you know, most rich people, they see all that stuff, but they are the ones that's causing most of this carbon footprint. So are you really part of the solution? I think you're still part of the problem, personally. There is an alien gene in the human genome, in the homo sapien sapien genome. And so you have these situations where you find these savants, these functioning savants yeah. and these autistic people and stuff like that, that develop, but it's tapping into ancient genes and the avatar body we have now, this homo sapien sapien has a problem balancing sometimes. And so you find these disparities between how they can handle basic logic versus how much their brain can really handle in different things like artistic music, numbers, memory. And some of these people have enormous memories. They can remember everything they've ever seen, touch, smell, hear, Red. I've been saying that guy everywhere. I don't know who he is, but he kind of just came out of nowhere. I wonder if he's really credible. Or he just say stuff. You know how everybody's talking about how really good open AI has got like Sora just came out and with text prompts, crazy. you can just, you know, create a video image that is almost indistinguishable from reality. I, I think as a matter of fact, it might be indistinguishable from reality and all the creators on here are warning us that the second they release this form of AI with text generated video prompt that all of a sudden you'll just be able to say, give us this and it'll show up kind of like, you know, in Star Trek, the holodeck, you know, except it'll be in video format. It only just now occurred to me and I'm not even on 
any sort of fungi. The frog in boiling water theory. Have you ever heard that the way you <laughs> boil a frog in water, if you're sadistic, I guess, is you put a frog in cold water and then you slowly turn up the heat and because they have cold blood, they never realize that they're in boiling water until they're dead? Well, this might be one of those cases in which uh, we're watching AI um, create the simulation that we're actually in because we're in the simulation and we're at the end of the simulation. You know what I mean? Like, you know how when you go to the edge of a map in a video game... Like civilization? Like, hey, we're still creating this. This is that's, that's the end of it. It doesn't get any bigger than this. You're going to have to wait till there's more. That's where we're at right now. This is the simulation. It's always been a simulation, but the people who are living right now, we're in the end of the map right now. We're the people who were lucky enough to be born when the simulation, um, you know, has to wait for its upgrade. I know Kung Fu. Yeah, I like that. Sore AI stuff, man, that stuff looks insane, but the reality is I'm going to take a, a while for that to even be uh, like usable, and even when they do come out to public, we're not going to be able to do those type of things because we're going to have so many restrictions on them, but regardless, and the simulation, yeah, I sell, AI is accelerating so fast, it is kind of scary, so yeah, I can see how he thinks that it's at the end of the simulation, but as far as the frog, um, the frog slowly boiling it uh, that's actually not true uh, i know we learned that growing up for like our analogies and metaphors and stuff but actually uh, a frog actually would just hop out after a certain temperature right now they're running on lithium ion batteries which means you charge it sometimes it can overheat it only it takes a long time to charge and it only lasts a certain amount of time you have to recharge it again they're going to give us, Elon Musk is creating Tesla phones, which is graphene batteries. And what that means is everyone's going to. Right now they're running on lithium ion batteries, which means you charge it. Sometimes it can overheat. It only, it takes a long time to charge and it only lasts a certain amount of time. You have to recharge it again. They're going to give us, Elon Musk is creating Tesla phones, which is graphene batteries. And what that means is everyone's going to love it. They're going to eat it up. Because it's lighter, it doesn't overheat, and it charges faster, and it lasts an entire week of charge. It, it, it's going to last longer. So you can say, get the new Tesla phone, because it lasts longer, it doesn't overheat, it's lighter. But it's running on 5 and 6G technology, and our sperm count is going to lower. Your cells, your molecular, everything about your molecular, you're going to be frying from the inside out, period. If you can't, if you don't get out of the city, if you don't... In the next 10 years, if you don't find a remote place to live away from this techno shit, they can just fucking hit you with the EMF and it will just fry your insides. And I brought that up because uh, Elon Musk's Tesla phones, he calls it a satellite phone and it's connected to the satellites, which is the Starlink, which is they're doing in Ukraine. In Ukraine, there's 10 million, there's probably more by now, like 15 million Ukrainians and they have an app called DIA, D-I-I-A, and it stands for me and the government, or me and the state, the state and me. So the government is ran through, the, through an app. It's an app. And so the point is, all these places are going to be putting their governments on an app, and then all the apps are going to connect onto one phone. So that it's literally a new world order, and we're, we don't even notice it. it Satellite phones have been out for, like, decades. Um, what he's doing is nothing new. As far as the 5G and 6G, I don't know enough about that to make a comment on it. So I'll let you guys uh, make a decision on that on your own. It's not actually the North Pole. The North Pole has been sailed every year for 30 years. Uh, it's off from the North Pole several hundred miles. This is in a region that's never been sailed before. It's between the magnetic North Pole and the actual North Pole. The waters are reported to be the roughest on the planet, so we're talking 10-story seas. This is not going to be a pleasure cruise by any stretch of the imagination. We'll be breaking ice for eight days to get there, so it's it's an, not an easy place to get to. One Could you imagine seeing 10-story high sea waves? That's crazy. Man, I hope somebody actually go there one day like a regular person. And expose it if it's true or not. I would love to be alive to see when that happens.
A player like this has billions and billions of potential sites for that water to congregate around. We'll launch them in sequences. We watch the radar to see when bands of the highest concentration of liquid water are passing above us in the clouds, and we try to target those high concentration pockets in the storm systems. Uh, we'll launch between three and 20 flares for a typical storm. Once the flare is lit, it takes a little bit of time to carry up into the clouds. And once it's up at, at the proper elevation, it'll take about 20 minutes to instigate the rain or the snow process. Uh, so overall, you're probably looking at about 40 to 45 minutes before you're seeing the maximum result. And that's why we're stationed miles away from our target area. So we have very specific targets that, that drain directly into major water basins. And we time these events correlate with rain above those intended targets. They making clouds? Was it the Harper or something like that? Where they control weather? Now we just got videos out here when they blatantly just saying that's what they doing. Make you wonder about the whole climate change and all the other stuff. True that the government trying to say. What well, signs is trying to say that's real. Anyway, if you guys are enjoying the video, make sure you hit the sub button. Leave a like or dislike. Even a comment. Make videos every single day. Let's get to the vi next video. What? I'm telling you, I'm getting the fuck off. And there's a reason why I'm getting the fuck off. And everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks. But I am telling you right now, that motherfucker, that motherfucker back there is not real. And you can sit on this plane and you can fucking die with them or not. I'm not going to. Everyone keeps saying that if they were on the plane with the distraught woman, that they would have got off with her. But here's the thing. Ever since the incident, the woman has been missing. The plane landed safely and all passengers got off and got all of their luggage. The missing woman, however, wasn't even worried about her belongings. She hasn't been seen or heard of since. There is no record of her being arrested. No one spotted her walking through the airport or getting into an Uber or a taxi cab for that matter. How could someone vanish into thin air after that incident? All passengers were forced to get off the plane. Authorities and staff were forced to go through all suitcases before passengers were able to board again. The three stewardesses aboard the plane were not allowed to board again, which I find highly suspicious. The accused shapeshifter has not came forward to clear his name. One thing is for certain, there are more questions now than there were when the incident first began. Either she was having like some type of psychotic episode or she can see stuff that the average person can't see. Either way, um, she was convinced it's true. I know regardless of her acting like that, I wouldn't want to be around that shapeshifter or uh, flight attendant ever again. Deep in the rabbit hole, there's like the grays that everybody talks about. And then there's another thing called the tall whites. The people have described them. They, they almost look like Scandinavian or something like that, like pale skin. Some alien life is probably, you know, hundred thousand years ahead of us seven hundred thousand years ahead of us a million years ahead of us but some alien life is probably millions and millions of years yeah. ahead of us they probably don't want to fuck with us anymore but i bet that intelligence reaches that moment where you can join the intergalactic hive yeah. of minds and the civilization reaches some insane harmony with the very universe itself right that's probably where it goes if you don't blow yourself up Aliens being that advanced, definitely could believe it. I mean, maybe that's why they come in here to look at the zoo since we're so far behind, right? Watch when they come back down. Rewind this back. Goes if you don't blow yourself up. So you see her hands go above her face once. Watch when they come back down. I wanted to post screenshots of the AI filter coming off so people could see for a bit longer just how insane this is. Watch her face glitch. Now watch her back tattoo disappear. Yo, what the... F
<laughs> the same thing with the Native Americans and the, the. Yo, what? Her tattoo disappeared. I mean, that could be that they use type of video editing software to make a hoax, or it could just be that she not who she say she is, man. She is a little crazy, so maybe they cloned her or something. I know some people believe that. The settlers, that the settlers were imposing their lifestyle, but the people that experienced the Native American lifestyle, they wanted to stay living like that. For sure. At first, they have this, this belief that something big will come across the water and be their god. And here comes a ship with a bunch of dirty assholes that literally factually dirty assholes have ridden across a boat. Mm -hmm. You know, when they land, mm -hmm. they're looking for gold everywhere. Right, right. Was it 12 of them conquistadors killed like a thousand natives in, in, a, in a matter of hours? I think about that perspective where they obviously were like, these people are nice, but I've had enough of this. They should have invented ships. We're better. So let's kill everyone here. Yeah. They didn't know what was going on because I don't think they... It, Previous to that time, they'd ever seen anyone on a horse before. No, you imagine a big boat and then yeah. a few horses where they're like, what the fuck is... Yeah. Uh, Gary, come over and look at this. There's this crazy theory about cereal boxes. How is there a theory on cereal boxes? Okay, so Cornell the University did study, and you know how on every cereal box they have like a mascot? So like Lucky Charms, Cocoa Puffs, Tricks, they all have a specific character on all their boxes. Right. But if you look at all the cereal boxes of the sugary cereals that are made for kids, all the characters on the boxes are looking down. So the yeah, Tricks yeah, Rabbit, Tony true. the Tiger, they're all looking down. So like their eyes are not looking straight, they're just looking kind of at the ground. Right, so the reason they make the characters do this is because they want the characters to make eye contact with the kids walking through the store so they're more inclined to buy it and that's why on the shelves the sugary cereals are lower than the adult cereals they put it lower so that it's easier for the kids to grab it right and you know how cheerios has the honeybee as their mascot yeah so if you look at a regular box of cheerios the honeybee is never on it but if you look at honey nut cheerios the honeybee is on it because it's the sugary one for kids and it's always looking down dude what the heck yo i always thought they was looking down because I they was looking at the cereal <laughs> Ah, that's crazy if that's true. That's kind of creepy. Makes sense for psych psychology-wise, though, if you're trying to sell some cereal. Such a thing as no-fly zones. For instance, you can't fly in certain areas near the Arctic Circle or the Antarctic Circle. The reasons being is because there are lands there that um, we're not supposed to know about. I'll give you one example. So Captain George Hubert Wilkins, a contemporary of Admiral Byrd, he flew beyond Antarctica 5,000 miles, according to his records, and he said that he found there many, many lands and peoples 5,000 miles beyond Antarctica. That's just one example of an explorer who has found lands that are not, on, multiple not ice walls. on any of our maps. They are excluded from all of our maps. That's why international pilots have such a thing as no-fly zone. Because they don't want those lands to be discovered. I ain't never see that flat earth. Um, oh, hold on, hold up. Yeah, I ain't never see that one before. That's crazy. I thought it was just one ice wall. I didn't know it was multiple ones according to the flat earthers. I'm not a flat earther myself, but I do find, I always found that theories to be very interesting because uh, it's a part of me that's hoping that it's real. You know what I mean? Like, because it's just more interesting. But this is because it's more interesting because. It could be something beyond our reach that we don't know. It's more content of stuff that we haven't seen. That that's the only reason why I find it interesting. But uh, that would be crazy if one day we wind up finding out that's true, and somehow that many people lied about it for that long. <laughs> so long, suckers. They uncovered the truth. Same old space, huh, Dad? Yep. Jealous? Well, no, we've got the same chair. You're jealous. Your membership pack. What's this? You put that sticker on your car so you won't get any tickets. And this other one keeps paramedics from stealing your wallet while working on you. Oh, and don't bother calling 911 anymore. Here's the real number. Who controls the British pound? Who keeps the metric system down? We do! We do! Who leads Atlantis off the maps? Who keeps the Martians under wraps? Like we do. I saw that when I was a kid. I ain't really 
question anything because you know I was a kid. I just thought it was just a a cool episode or something. But now nah, that's that's really going down somewhere for a hundred percent sure. Somebody's controlling all this stuff. It's a big club, and we not in it. One, two unidentified objects were spotted following a military warship. Were these extraterrestrial craft or a top secret military project? The USS Kearsarge was conducting routine training exercises off the east coast of the US when it encountered two car-sized glowing objects that seemed to be following the vessel. These mysterious objects continued to trail the warship at a distance of half a mile and 200 feet in the air. Despite the efforts of the Marines on board who attempted to track the unidentified objects using thermal optics and radar, they remained remained elusive. Multiple crew members claim to have been able to observe and record the objects using cameras, but the footage has not been made public. The USS Kearsarge's advanced counter-drone technology failed to detect or respond to these objects. The Navy and the Marine Corps have both denied that the objects belong to any military unit. The USS Kearsarge incident has left many wondering if this was a sighting of extraterrestrial life or advanced technology from another country. And as of now, the true nature of these mysterious objects remains unknown. No, if that's from of a country and United States number one when it comes to the military, when it comes to like technology, that would be insane. I find that very hard to believe. I would say it's probably some type of entity that's either from from there, somewhere on earth that we don't know about, or they just watching us. Like I said, man, they watching us to see if we won't do nothing crazy with them nukes. We a threat to the whole solar system because we got nukes. If you think about it, and uh, you know humans, they excel through war, so. Long as this war keep going on, we, our technology gonna keep going up. So that's just how it is. They watching us, man. Is happening beneath Antarctica. In 1985, a naval engineer stationed at McMurdo Station in Antarctica made a terrifying discovery. While transporting supplies and crew members to sites around Antarctica, he and his crew reported seeing circular aircraft flying above an area known as the Beardmore Glacier. However, they were never allowed to investigate further as the area was designated as an air exclusion zone. At one point, they received an emergency call to rescue an injured crew member who had gone on an expedition. The captain knew they wouldn't make it in time using conventional flight routes, so he decided to fly through the Beardmore Glacier to reach the injured individual. However, upon entering the air exclusion zone, they witnessed a giant hole the size of a football field leading beneath the ice. Eventually, they successfully rescued the injured crew member. Follower. But upon returning to McMurdo Station, they were greeted by a man in black who told them, What you saw at the pole, you did not see. If you speak of it, <laughs> you will have serious problems. But yeah, that crazy. That actually went down and person was like, You tell somebody? I wonder why they don't want us to go down there so bad. And the Federal Reserve? Well, here it goes. So on the Titanic, there's some extremely wealthy passengers like J.P. Morgan, John Rockefeller, and the Rothschilds. But then you have Jacob Astor, the wealthiest man in the world at the time. He owned about 40% of all mortgages, and he was a Freemason who was very opposed to the idea of a central bank. Whereas J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, and Rothschild strongly supported the idea of a central bank. Yeah, I bet they so did, Jacob right? Astor was the only one standing in the way of a central bank at the time. Coincidentally, the morning the Titanic was supposed to set sail, J.P. Morgan, some Rothschilds, and others quietly exited the ship without any explanation. Five days later, Titanic slams into an iceberg, and it starts to sink. And even though Jacob Astor is the wealthiest man in the world, he still can't find a seat in a lifeboat, and he ends up sinking with the ship. Shortly after, these guys become the wealthiest men in the world, and without Jacob Astor standing in their way, the next year in 1913, on Jekyll Island in Georgia, the Federal Reserve Act was signed into law, paving the way to print money out of thin air and completely control our monetary system. Was this a coincidence or a conspiracy? It ain't no coincidence. They killed my man. Crazy. They killed all those other people too in the process, man. The people up here, man, they so fucking evil. They wouldn't do anything for that the for power, man. I man had just gotten back from walking your dog. Her doorbell camera shows her starting to take off oh, the dog's man, what's leash this? when she looks over to the right, causing her to quickly pick up her dog and get inside. Immediately, we find out why. Weirdo. The man comes into frame and walks right up to the front door. He tries the handle, but she managed to lock it just in time. The man then starts putting on gloves, and she also mentioned how he was carrying zip ties. He looks into the house and tries the door handle multiple more times within the next few minutes. 
Eventually, her neighbor comes outside. To this, the man picks up a nearby garden hose and acts like he's doing yard work. Once the neighbor left, the man walks around to the house's back door. Camera recording. He tried forcing the back door open, to which the homeowner locked herself in a room and called the police. In the time it took them to arrive, the man tried breaking in almost every window to the house. He broke off the screen to one of the back windows, but was ultimately unsuccessful at getting inside. By the time police arrived, he had left. There wasn't much the police could do by that point. The homeowner ended up posting the video to TikTok in the hopes that someone could identify the man. As far as I could find, no one could. Predators are everywhere. Gotta make sure you're always vigilant and paying attention to what's going on, man. Lock everything. But if somebody wanna get in the house, the sad reality is they wanna get in bad enough, they will get in. So you better have yourself armed. I don't care if it's a spear, a knife, something. That's why it's always good to have a dog too to at least let you know something coming. People are disgusting, man. If you had to guess, how many brands do you think are actually in the cereal aisle? Well, you know me. Like three. Hit up the cereal aisle, snap some photos. So we'll walk our way down the aisle and see how many companies actually control this. Well, Cheerios is easy to start. Cheerios is General Mills. So we'll color all of the different types of Cheerios red for General Mills. That was a color But too. hold up. Turns out Chex is also General Mills. And so is Kix. And so is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, so far, the only spots that are not red are Winco's own brand name cereals. Looking down the aisle, this is where we left off. They also got Reese's Puffs, and also Cocoa Puffs and Tricks. Oh yeah, and they got Kicks and Lucky Charms too. But hey, at least we got these natural cereals up here that are healthy. Psych! Those aren't healthy, and they ain't that natural, and those are owned by General <laughs> Mills as well. Ah, but when I moved down the aisle, I found Kellogg. Corn Flakes is Kellogg, and so are all of those cereals. But hey, at least we got this natural panda stuff and Kashi up here, keeping it real. Psych! Kashi is owned by Kellogg, man. Oh, wow. I didn't know but Kashi was owned by that. This is its own deal, and we will talk about them at the end. They might be our only bastion of hope in the entire cereal aisle. We'll see. All right, we're going to speed up and move down the line. This is more Kellogg stuff. But now we got Fruity Pebbles and Cocoa Pebbles and... Yeah, that's right. All that shit's owned by Post. Still, except for that one little panda brand, all these gaps are just Winco's generic brands. We moved on down the line to the end of the post section and we found Captain Crunch. And Captain Crunch is owned by PepsiCo. But now we come to Quaker Oats up there. About Pepsi Turns Co? out Quaker Oats owns Life Cereal. Right on. We got a little bit of diversity in the end of the aisle. Psych! Guess who owns Quaker Oats, baby? Damn straight. End of the aisle is all PepsiCo. Except for one asshole that put this box of General Mills cereal back in the wrong place. Shame on you. Shame. So in the cereal aisle, we got General Mills is red, Kellogg is blue, purple is Post, and orange is PepsiCo. Who do you think are the biggest stakeholders of those companies? That's right, baby. It is BlackRock and Vanguard at the top of all of those lists, with the exception of the Kellogg Foundation, which was set up a long time ago with a bunch of the shares of the founders. So when we look at who owns the biggest stake in all these brands, what does the cereal aisle actually look like? Looks like the Black Rock and Vanguard aisle. <laughs> Except for this panda cereal from Hive Brands. We believe that using business as a force for good is a responsibility for all of us. This mission keeps us going, along with the conviction that big corporations aren't going to save us or solve our problems. It's up to us. It's good talk. Now, I'm not necessarily saying you can't buy any of those cereals or anything. I just thought you should know. As for Hive Brands, I don't know. The real test is once they get real big, do they sell out or do they stay cool? Of course they're going to sell out. I think I found the real reason why the American Revolutionary War was started. And I think history is repeating itself. And it's not what they taught us in school. Because if you learned about the American Revolutionary War in school, you were probably taught about things like the Stamp Act, where the slogan was no taxation without representation. And sure, this is part of the story, but it's not the whole story. So what was it that the Founding Fathers were really most concerned about? Well, it definitely wasn't tea. And part of it was taxation without representation. But the big thing was actually money. It's always if you money. notice, 
The Stamp Act was regulating all sorts of printed materials that had to be printed on stamped paper. So they were regulating printed materials. And the important part is that it had to be paid in British currency, not in colonial paper money. Because at the time, the colonists were experimenting with all sorts of their own kinds of money. During the 1700s, the colonists were free from English central banking Mm -hmm. that had been ruling their lives for the last hundred years or more. And they were inventing their own currencies by the people, for the people. And don't get me wrong, many of those currencies were garbage and many of them failed. It was the Wild West. There were all kinds of problems with colonial paper money, but it wasn't controlled by the English Central Bank. And that was a problem. So Great Britain imposed all kinds of laws to try to regulate the paper currencies that were getting invented. And when the Stamp Act went into effect, because so much of these taxes had to be paid in British currency, it put a de facto end to much of this colonial paper money because businesses needed to pay their taxes in this currency They couldn't pay it with this currency. This is how the British retained control of their currency until the Revolutionary War. Makes me think of one of the most famous quotes from a Rothschild. Permit me to issue and control the money of a nation, and I care not who makes its laws. Mayor Anselm Rothschild, 1790. American history is vastly complex, and any TikTok is going to vastly oversimplify it. But there's a reason why they teach you about the stamps and the tea in school and not about the money. And while I was researching this, I kept on thinking like, huh, the incumbent established governmental powers passing a bunch of regulation to try to regulate new currencies invented by the people? Weird, that sounds familiar. It's almost like people inventing new sovereign forms of money that aren't ruled by central banks and established power is a threat to the powers that be. I mean, it was kind of weird how for years and years and years, The SEC and Mr. Gensler gave no guidance as to whether cryptocurrencies were securities or not and whether or not they'd be regulated. And then all of a sudden we're at war with cryptocurrencies. Besides, Gary Gensler is like a public servant. He's not like part of an entrenched established financial elite at all. And I mean, come on, he was nominated by Mr. Joe B, who's literally uncorruptible and has no evidence of ever having done anything shady. Besides, Gary's an expert at finance, and he learned it from one of the most reputable organizations ever, who literally can't even escape Wikipedia calling them out, (laughs) has been criticized for lack of ethical standards, working with dictatorial regimes, close relationships with the U.S. federal government via a revolving door of former employees. I mean, lots of cryptocurrencies are trash, you know? It's the Wild West of new money. Kind of like paper money was back in the 1700s. And it kind of makes you think how different the world would look if we were all still using British currency and this had never happened. But if you work for the CIA and you're watching this, just know that I am not calling for a revolution. I'm just calling for education about finance. Like the average person doesn't know shit about how money works and they should. Um, Sue me. And P.S. I'm going out in the woods again this weekend. I'll be gone for a little bit. Don't worry. I'm fine. I'm happy. I'm healthy. I have no intention to Epstein myself. Life is great over here. Y'all be good now. Drink some water. Smart man for saying that when it comes to the crypto and things like that. Yeah, of course they want to control it because uh, more money for them. Um, But yeah, you definitely learned that in school that it was about um, the T. That's what that's what I was taught. I didn't know anything about the whole uh, currency thing. I knew about the uh, the colonial um, papers and each state was trying to have its own money. But I didn't know that's the reason why, like the British and stuff was so pissed off and things like that. But yeah, I'm not surprised they're trying to control all this stuff now. It doesn't surprise me at all. Guys, on the next one. Peace. Anna made a horrible mistake at her halftime show by reinforcing the crazy conspiracy theory that the Super Bowl is actually a live satanic ritual hosted by the elites to show off their power and influence mm-hmm. to the peasants watching. And that every year the performer must flash the crowd a demonic or evil symbol of the Illuminati if they want to perform. Beyonce put up the same exact symbol to the crowd at her Super Bowl halftime show and was all over the news the next day for it. Conspiracy theorists believe that Beyonce signaled that she's part of a secret society (laughs) sent on world domination. Some claim that's just the Rock Nation symbol, but why would other celebrities who aren't affiliated with Rock Nation at all flash it? Stop making excuses for them! At Justin Timberlake's 2018 show, he had a giant silhouette of Satan laughing at the crowd with his tail. They played it off like a guy playing the guitar. At Madonna's 2012 show, she was doing karate to show symbolism and wearing the Illuminati owl crown on her head. 
This was insane. JLo's costume was showing this evil satanic goat and she was showing the horns with her head too. Look at her costume though. You can't tell me those are two eyes and a nose and then antlers going up. The weekend's dancers are literally wearing such similar outfits to the exact same ones they would do in a satanic ritual. You can't tell me that whole thing didn't look demonic as hell. Literally. Before I show you the craziest part, make sure you follow us. You finally know the craziest conspiracy theories about each of these celebrities and be in the know and request who you want to see next. Have you ever wondered why the Super Bowl is even called the Super Bowl? Because if you just move over the B, it actually spells Superb Owl, which is the... <laughs> Seriously though, the same exact demonic owl that Madonna was wearing on her head and one of the main species of animals that symbolizes satanic worship. Hmm. That is very um, interesting. I didn't know anything about like the Super Bowl. You guys think the Illuminati and all that stuff is real? Do you guys think the Super Bowl um, does? They do rituals and stuff. Let me know. Put a comment below and let me let me know what you guys think. I would love to do more videos about that topic. <laughs>most famous serial killer in history in 1888 the video we just watched that's actually from um someone on youtube uh i can't remember the name of it but i know uh then the guy the person who talked about it that how i found though his name was wendigoon shout out to him if you never watch his videos i highly suggest you watch him but those videos that uh we just saw that scared the crap out of me when they first came out when he was talking about them like man, i had trouble sleeping that type of psychological horror Scares the daylights out of me, man. A man terrorized the streets of Whitechapel, London for 12 weeks with brutal and gruesome murders. He mainly went after prostitutes and had a neck for slit throats, mutilated bodies, and on one occasion, right, he was said to have eaten the kidneys of one of the victims. Ew. One very particular thing about this case was that the victims were gutted in a very precise way, and it was speculated that he might be a medical professional. There are only five confirmed victims, However, it's said that there were many more. To this day, he was never found, but Jack the Ripper remains. I would have peed myself if I saw this. So sale was a paper... When it comes to uh, Jack the Ripper, you know, uh, during that time, I don't want to sound like skeptical, but during that time, a lot of new paper, newspaper was like making fake stories so people could buy their papers. I'm not saying that he wasn't real or anything, but it is a possibility that he wasn't real. But that's what I remember uh, when I was doing research on him. I'm hoping he was never real. But if he was, man, that is a very dangerous person. A lot of people think he was a doctor or a surgeon because the way he cut so precise. For delivery boy years ago. And what he saw on his route is terrifying. Before we dive in, if you love ghost stories, make sure you check out my podcast. This week's episode is all ghost stories from listeners. So when Sale was a paper delivery boy, he always delivered to this one house in his neighborhood where an old woman lived. She was not in great health, so she actually had given him a key so he could let himself in and leave the paper on the table. One day he lets himself in in the middle of the day and he sees that she's in her room lying in her bed fully asleep. This is not normal for her, so he calls to her, but she doesn't answer. So he puts the paper on the table and he just heads out. But the next day is the same exact thing. He comes into her house and she's asleep in her room not moving and not answering. So he's like, okay, if I come back tomorrow and it's the same thing, I'm going to call for help. Except the next day when he arrives, she greets him at the door and she's saying things like, thank you so much for delivering my paper. I loved seeing you around. I'm gonna miss you. And he's like, okay, that's kind of weird. So the next day he comes back to deliver the paper and there's cars all outside. So Sale runs up to a police officer and is like, what's going on? And the police calmly explains that the woman in the house had passed away days prior and a neighbor finally noticed and called it in. So then who did Sale see when he went to the house? The Teletubbies conspiracy theory claims that the show was inspired by events in a Bulgarian mental facility called La La Land. Psychotic children were purportedly isolated in dark rooms and apparently four children who died on the same day inspired the characters in Teletubbies. Lala's facial disfigurement and five years of isolation man, that is, inspired that is Lala. creepy looking, man. Tuate, a deaf 
facially uh, deformed yeah, child I... was tied to the fence outdoors in frostbitten, inspiring Tinky Winky. Donka, starving and unwell, inspired Dipsy by lying in his vomit for days. Ultimately, Paulina fell into a fire and was roasted alive, inspiring yes. Poe. So why are they called the Teletubbies? The children's main source of comfort were the television sets in their room. And when they got word that the mental institution was getting rid of them, the children concocted a plan to hide the TVs. The children would rip out their insides to hide the miniature TV sets that were too big to swallow, only to be found dead by the returning caregivers the next morning. That was very disturbing. First of all, why do you have kids in a situation like that? But regardless, that's really creepy and disturbing. I'm plastic. I don't even have a voice box. I had to borrow this one. Don't turn on the light. Are you going to kill me? This Polish woman is claiming to be the missing <laughs> Madeline McCann, but did you know there's age progression photos done of Madeline Man. that could help us know what she would look like today? Mm. In 2007, Madeline was taken from her family's bedroom while they were on vacation in Portugal. And immediately the parents came under fire because they did leave the kids Man, asleep the in the apartment by themselves while they went to dinner with friends. This is the official age progress photo of Madeline to age nine, and this is the woman who's now claiming that she is Madeline. And this woman does have some of Madeline's signature features. Here you can see a black speck that looks like a pupil in Madeline's eye, which is something they both share. She's also claiming that she has a lot of missing memories from childhood, but the eye spec does seem to be her most convincing argument. But German prosecutors actually believe that Madeline is no longer alive. And two people believe they saw this man carrying a small girl towards the beach around the time that Madeline's parents first noticed that she was missing. But that being said, it's not completely- I'm sorry to pause right here real quick, but do things like this, do things like this creep you out? I don't know what it is about these type of photos or sketches or whatever. Man, it's creepy looking, man. After watching that jump scare, now I'm like looking around to see if I'm hearing stuff, man. My brain going crazy right now. But those photos always creep me out, man. If you see another person that looks identical to you, run away and hide. It's from the same YouTube uh, channel I was talking about. I'm going to find it and put a link in the de uh, description below. It's a very creepy uh, series. There are five different types of angels according to the Bible. The first one is the seraphim, who are described in Isaiah as having six wings. With two of the wings, they cover their face, and with another two, they cover their feet, and with the last two, they're flying. Their whole role and purpose is to praise God in heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The second type is cherubim. These things are crazy looking, being described in Ezekiel 10 as having human features, except for the fact that these things are on fire, having two to six gigantic wings. They have a green crystal spinning wheel floating next to them, and they have eyes covering every inch of their body, including the wheel. And oh, the like craziest part Fantasy is that they have four Japanese faces. The right RPG. face is a lion, the left an ox or a cherub face, in front is an eagle, and in back a human face. God placed one of these in the Garden of Eden in Genesis to keep Adam and Eve from re-entering, and the most well-known cherub is none other than Lucifer, the devil himself. The third type is archangels. Very little is known about them, and they're only mentioned a couple times in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians, and Jude. The word comes from the Greek word archangelos, which means chief angel, so they're most likely in leadership roles over other angels. In Jude, we learn that the only archangel to be mentioned by name is Michael. He's the leader that we see lead the other angels to kick out Satan and his followers out of heaven, and the one in Revelation to fight off the dragon in the end times. So fourth type is warrior angels. These are shown in Revelation 9 as being an army of cavalry. The riders are described by John as having fiery red, dark blue, and sulfur yellow breastplates, and the horses they ride on 
have tails like snakes with heads on the end, and their own heads are that of a lion with fire, smoke, and sulfur coming out of their mouths. They're being led the by the Archangel Michael to fight off the Even forces of the devil in, in the end times. The fifth type is messenger angels. These angels are the ones that give messages to humans directly from God. The main one that we know of is Gabriel, as he was the one to give the message to Zechariah and Mary that they are going to have a child, even though it wasn't physically possible for either of them to have a child. Though we don't know what they look like, we do know that they were terrifying to behold, specifically Gabriel, as he had to say multiple times to people to not be afraid. And so next time your friends ask you how many angels there are, you can tell them that Look like an angel Walk like an angel That YouTube channel again. If you see another person that looks identical to you, run away and hide. You guys remember the scary story, The Creature in the Cellar? The story goes like this. There was a little boy named Tommy who was so utterly terrified of his basement. Anytime he was in the kitchen near the cellar door, he would scream and cry and kick and just want to leave. His parents decided to take him to see a therapist. When they asked Tommy why he was so scared of the basement, he just said that he always felt like there was a creature down there trying to get him. Tommy's dad said, that's impossible. I go in the basement every day. I know that there's nothing down there. The doctor then told Tommy's parents to give him exposure therapy, which they basically said, make him sit in front of the cellar door alone until he's not scared anymore. So that night when it got yeah, dark outside, really Tommy's dad nailed the basement door open, turned off all the lights and lit a single candle, placed it on the kitchen table and made Tommy sit in the kitchen alone in front of the basement door. That night they went to check on Tommy in the kitchen and found that he had been mutilated and unalived. Nobody ever knew exactly what happened to Tommy, but it's safe to assume that he was attacked by whatever he saw living in the cellar. What are some of the craziest things? That That's why you always listen to your kids, man. Yeah, they might lie, make some stuff up, but doesn't hurt to pay attention. Not saying if a story true or not, but regardless. And everybody, know when you were younger, everybody was afraid to run up the basement steps. You know, I always thought someone was coming after you. You would just shut the door behind you. Man, I know that's how it was for me when I was younger. Basically, used to scare the crap out of me when I was a kid. That people have confessed to at the end of their lives. Well, in this series, I'm going to show you some of the wildest stories I found. And I cover all sorts of spooky and true crime stuff on this page, so make sure you follow along. So this story comes from a woman who was helping her mother at the end of her mother's life. The woman actually lived in Europe, but her mom lived in China. So when she got the call that her mother wasn't doing very well, she made the long journey all the way back. And right when she gets there, her mother asks all the doctors and nurses to leave the room. She apparently wanted to be absolutely alone with her daughter. So the daughter's like, what's up, are you okay? And the mom tells her she knows she doesn't have a lot of time left, so there's something she really wants to tell her. Her mother proceeds to tell her that she's not actually her biological mother. And obviously this comes as like a huge shock to the daughter, but it's nothing compared to what came next. The mother proceeds to tell her that when she was younger, she really wanted to have her own kids, but unfortunately she just wasn't able to get pregnant. Yeah, right and not only that, but that. she didn't have a lot of money. So going through an adoption agency wasn't necessarily an option. So she actually bought the daughter off the black market for adopted children in China. Meaning she didn't know if the daughter's adopted parents gave her up willingly or if someone had taken her to put her on the black market. The mother actually passed away just shortly after that, and we haven't gotten right. any update from the poster if she got any more information on her biological family. Oh no, 
No, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no. I'm telling you, doing night security, it's got to be one of the scariest jobs. Yeah, right? So this photo right here, this was captured by Michael Hostin on the third floor bathroom of a Dallas shopping mall. The reason he took it was because he's night security and he heard noises coming from his bathroom, but he was nervous to check the actual stall, so he sends a picture to his coworker. After he sent the picture, he eventually leaves the bathroom, but then gets a text where his coworker says, keep your weapon drawn and call for backup. He had no idea what he was talking about until he increased the brightness of this picture. It's not easy to see in the dark, but with the photo enhanced and slightly brightened, you can see somebody peeking over the top of that metal stall. Someone was in there looking directly at him as he searched the bathroom. But even with a visual, by the time backup eventually came, whoever this was, they were gone. And we were left with this picture. I don't see anything. But you know, I could be blind as a bat. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Let's get straight to the videos. Doja Cat had a very interesting thing on September 1st. And she started promoting her new music video single called mm -hmm. Demons. And it is her dressed as a demon on the Friends couch with the Friends logo above her. But instead of Friends, it says Demons. And like all of that's kind of in your face. Like there's some occult, maybe revelation the method going on here. Something's coming. And the biggest Probably reason I be. included this wasn't just the fact that the timing was a little odd that, you know, mm -hmm. less than two months before Matthew Perry's death, she's promoting it this way. You know, I, mm. friends was a popular TV show. It's a whatever. Yeah. What's, what's weird about this picture? Besides well, the demon the on the logo. couch. Besides the demon on the couch. Besides <laughs> the obvious about the logo itself. There's no dot in between D and E. That's it, right? And I looked into this. Friends, I'm Sherlock. You are. Friends is uh, the word friends is seven letters, and in between each yep. letter is a dot, and there's six dots. And if you look at old promotional Wasn't material, from the film, you notice that each dot corresponds to a person. Yes. In this logo, I know it's five dots it, it, instead of six, and the, it's four dots because one's missing, whatever. That, that's not the point. The point is that it's very obvious that one of the dots is missing, that one of the dots that represents a cast member of oh, wow. Friends is missing. Is missing. They didn't know that's what the, yeah. those dots meant. Interesting. Huh. Makes you, you know, that makes you wonder, like, is Matt Perry picking up on the, the fact that they're planning to kill him? Kinda. And that's why he's, like, sending out the bat signal? That's unhinged, PJ. Don't be stupid. It's supposed to be unhinged. <laughs> I'm going to get super unhinged on this show. But I think it means something. You know, that's crazy. Um, obviously, eventually, Perry did, you know, pass away. But a lot of people um, don't know that um, Doja Cat had always been weird. You know, if you look at the history of her, she had an obsession with uh, just sitting in the house all the time. And she was very known to be on 4chan and other weird websites. So I understand, like, a lot of people are, like, all surprised that she's being all weird and stuff nowadays but she always been like that i think the industry just didn't want her to show her true colors at first regardless i don't think that's a coincidence i don't think anything's a coincidence so you know like i always say powers to be illuminati you know they the ones controlling stuff so wouldn't be surprised it'd be out in plain view for everyone to see and what can we do about it so unintentionally disturbing characters from children's shows part one nosy bunk from jigsaw was a mute character who tried to solve a multitude of puzzles during the creepy. show. Limbo, from Sesame Street, was a Muppet made up of two floating eyes and a mouth over a yeah, black background speaking with a deep and calm voice. Let's count to ten. Him, from the Powerpuff Girls, nah, I don't was think the secondary is that antagonist of the show Not and the really. devil of the world. Aesthetically. <laughs> I actually like him. So haunted. It had actor Jim Carrey fleeing in the middle of the night. This is the infamous Stanley Hotel. The Stanley Hotel is most commonly known as the hotel that inspired Stephen King's The Shining. Yep, this one. The Stanley the Hotel sits in hauntingly beautiful Estes Park, Colorado. It was opened in 1909 by Freeland Oscar Stanley. It's called the Disneyland for ghosts. Recently, a guest caught this ghostly woman in the window while taking a photo of the hotel's entrance. Here's a closer look. If you've seen The Shining, you know the infamous room that Danny is told to avoid. Well, that room is based on room 217 at the Stanley. Stephen King stayed there himself, and it's reportedly haunted by Miss Wilson, one of the Stanley's original housekeepers in the 1910s. She's an old-fashioned type of woman and doesn't approve of unwed couples sharing the room or bed. Couples have said they felt a cold force in between them at night, and even reports of waking up to the male's belongings and suitcase packed up at the door. She's like, get out. 
A notable guest of Room 217 is actor Jim Carrey. The hotel was a location for Dumb and Dumber, and during filming, Jim checked into Room 217 for a stay. And only stayed for a few hours. In the middle of the first night, he ran down to the front desk and demanded to be moved into another room, <laughs> saying that something had happened and he did not feel safe in that room. When the front desk told him that the hotel was fully booked, he left. To this day, no one knows who or what Jim Carrey saw in that room that night. Jim, we really want to know. Please? The hotel's staircase is considered a spiritual vortex, and another spirit Whoa, was caught on camera pictured here. Why would you want to and stay the in the haunting place like twins that? from the shining film that ties into the stanley as well guests staying on the fourth floor frequently report hearing children running laughing giggling and playing and who is that is that a person what's going on here and lastly a ghost of a cowboy haunts room 428 and has a flirty presence he's been seen standing at the corner of the bed and appears mostly to women some guests have even reported feeling the sensation of a kiss on their cheek I had no idea that ghosts could kiss. If, if a good looking ghost kissed me, would I immediately pull away? <laughs> I might linger. Oh, man. A lot of you requested the Stanley, so I want to know, do you all have any spooky stories there or would you be right, down, down for this day? Ghosts. I actually have a story about um, staying in a very big house and um, a lot of weird stuff happened. About 10 years ago, I uh, used to install electrical meters. I don't know if you guys remember. People in the U.S., I'm not sure about outside of the United States, but the whole country was upgrading to these things called smart meters. So the meter reader didn't have to come and actually read the meter. They can just scan and body in the neighborhood. So I had to go up to New Hampshire. Um, I'm originally from Maryland. So I had to go up to the middle of nowhere in New Hampshire. I love that state, by the way. And um, we stayed in this really big house. I mean, this house had like, it had to have at least 20 rooms in it. And it was huge. And I remember just sitting in the living room and I just felt so uneasy. It was a whole bunch of like just old paintings and pictures and just a whole bunch of old furniture and stuff. I don't know what it was. It's just the energy felt uneasy. The house had multiple kitchens. And I just remember being in, um, it wasn't even that many of us, maybe like 10 or less. But like I said, it was like 20 rooms. Not all of us was on the same floor. And I remember I shared a room with someone from another state and we was in a room and I remember closing the door and, but I kept hearing like knocks out in the hallway, footsteps in the hallway and things like that, man, that stuff creeped me to crap out. Like I wouldn't go out to use the bathroom. I hold my blood the whole night. And I remember as soon as the sun came up, me and the guy I left out and was like, Nope, we're not, we're not staying here much no longer. And we left. I think we only stayed, Pretty sure we only stayed in that place for one day. Never again, man. But you know what's really um, sad about ghosts? I'm hoping it's not the case, but it's like, man, imagine you like passing away and you don't even go to where you believe you go at when you die. Like, imagine being stuck on like this plane of existence, but you're dead. But that'll have to suck. I wonder why most ghosts are like <laughs> unironically pissed off right sorry if that was like a long story i just felt like sharing it so we all know about smile dog but have you guys heard of smile owl oh man that looks creepy disclaimer this video is for entertainment really purposes weird. only creepy pastas are not real or are they a young man wakes up in the middle of the night with a really bad taste in his mouth but it wasn't like a bad breath taste it was more like a very very sweet taste he went to the bathroom and brushed his teeth, but it didn't take away the taste. Then he noticed that there was a white substance on his tongue that wouldn't come off. No matter how much he brushed his tongue, the white substance just would not come off. He walked back into his bedroom, and when he looked out the window, he saw this. An all-white owl staring at him. The young man and the owl locked gazes, and then the owl did something very strange. The owl smiled, and in its mouth were human teeth. After the man realized that the owl had human teeth, he started feeling a very strange sensation in his tongue. What happens next would change his life forever. Part 2 is on my page now. Before you get mad at me for doing a part 2, it's the only way my videos are making it on the For You page. Hmm. I have to check out the part 2. That's um, freaky, man. That's disgusting. Could you imagine seeing a, a bird come to your house at night, at night with human teeth? But I'm gone. Like I would run out so fast, I wouldn't even question it i'm just i'm gone or i'm like attacking the bird one or the other fight or flight right 
Part 2 of Smile Owl After the man in the owl lock eyes, he realizes that the owl has human teeth in its mouth, and it's smiling at him. His tongue begins to hurt really bad. This wasn't like any normal hurt. This was an excruciating, otherworldly hurt. His tongue started throbbing and pulsating, and it began to swell up like a balloon. Meanwhile, the owl is just staring at him with a huge human smile on its face, just never looking away. The man's tongue is swelling up so bad that he's starting to have difficulty breathing. He does the only thing that he can think to do in that moment, and he goes into the kitchen and grabs a knife. He punctures his tongue, thinking that it will help with the swelling. It just makes everything worse. The pain is unbearable at this point, and the owl is still staring at him, smiling. So the man does the only thing that he can think of, and he cuts off his tongue. He tosses the tongue and it lands in his bedroom. He hears a noise that sounds like wings flapping in his bedroom. He goes to look and his tongue is gone. The owl is still outside, only this time he has a tongue in his mouth. You had a knife, right? I hate to say it, but why didn't you just attack the bird? I mean, that's probably what I would have did. If I didn't run away first, right? These are the most disturbing things found in food, part one. Okay, so everybody watching this video definitely had a Capri Sun. But after watching this video, you would definitely never have another one again. In 2016, a young boy told his dad that the juice wasn't coming out of the Capri Sun packet. So his dad then cut it open, and what they found inside will make you stick to your stomach. Okay. Four year old was trying to drink it, and this is what it's inside. Ew. Nasty. Well, what is it? What is that? So next time you go and drink a Capri Sun, you might be drinking fungus instead of Capri Sun. Hey, my stomach hurt, man. That is disgusting. I mean, I've had a Capri Sun since I was like 10, but definitely not going to have one ever again. I, I wonder what that was, though. He said fungus, but what type of fungus? Hopefully a guy like sued the company about a settlement or something. Disgusting, man. Disturbing facts that will ruin your day, part 16. If you have died around your cat, it is likely to start eating you in less than 24 hours, starting from cheeks yeah, and eyes. Eat, right? The green falling coat in the Matrix is just lots of sushi recipes. A woman being arrested for wearing one-piece bathing suits in the 1920s. By the time you reach the age of 18, on average, you have 3,300 weekends left in your life. Hey, man, that's a lot of weekends, man. These are some extremely unsettling facts. And I found all of these on Reddit. In the 1982 film Poltergeist, there's a scene where actress Jo Beth Williams is in a pool. And when she's in this pool, she starts to realize that corpses are all in the water and they start to come up and attack her. Now to us, it just seemed like another amazing scene to add to one of the best horror movies ever. But this scene has a dark twist to it. You see, in the filming of this scene, they used real corpses. Real? And actress Jo Beth Williams had no idea wow, about this. So real. And it genuinely adds another level of terror to this movie. The Wizard of Oz is one of the best known movies of all time. It follows Dorothy and her dog Toto as a tornado comes and takes them away from their home in Kansas. But this movie has a very creepy urban legend behind it. In this specific scene of the movie, you can see Dorothy and all of her friends going down the road. But if you look deep in the background, you'll see what seems to be a human hanging from a tree. And finally, scientists oh, wow. have made a disturbing discovery. Before I get into that, if you guys want a really sweet surprise, go ahead and peep my bio. But anyway, scientists have made a very scary discovery in the glaciers of the world. Scientists have discovered that there are several diseases that are frozen within the ice of glaciers. I know what you're thinking. I mean, it's frozen. Like, we don't have to worry about that. But this is a problem because the Earth has started to warm up at a very steady rate since 2015, especially. And thus, if these glaciers melt enough, it will release these viruses and diseases into the Earth. But look, that was really negative, and I'm sorry about that. And if you want something more positive, make sure to go peep my bio. But uh, I guess that's really it. Um, oh, I forgot. I can, yeah, I can see the diseases really old, strong, like potent diseases from like millions of years ago. I mean, everything was bigger, so I can see the disease has been very strong in our immune system. Obviously, never fought against it before, so, you know, but that's what we got scientists for. They better figure something out, man. I ain't trying to die of that. Or maybe, you know, maybe that's not true. They just don't want you to find out what's really going down really was going down to Antarctica, right? So much the world doesn't tell us. If you're thinking about ignoring your gut instinct, don't. Here are three reasons why you should instinct. trust it. Reddit user Kylan13 said that he went out on a couple of dates with the girl, but he got a weird vibe from her, so he didn't stay in touch. She stabbed her next boyfriend two months later. Oh, wow. Megan said that she was being pursued by a man. 
He kept coming into the bar that she worked at and was constantly asking her out. Directly, there was nothing wrong or troubling about him. She just got a terrible feeling whenever he was talking to her. She would feel terribly sick. All of her female co-workers kept egging her on to go on a date with this man, though. She kept saying, no, something about him makes me sick. Eventually, one of her friends convinced her to go on a double date with her and her boyfriend and this man. It only lasted about two hours before Megan said she wasn't feeling well and got a cab home. She didn't see the man for a couple of weeks, so she thought that maybe he had gotten the hint. But no. The same friend who pressured her into going on a double date called Megan yelling hysterically. She said that she would never doubt Megan's judgment again and forwarded her a news story about how the same man was just arrested a couple of days before for the murder of a woman he was dating. So the entire time that he was trying to convince Megan to go on a date, he had already strangled and killed another woman wow. and set her house on fire to try world? and cover it up. A former Reddit user said that she was sitting in her bedroom one day when she got this intense feeling in her gut, which was sort of saying, you need to get out of here right now. Then she started to get this immense feeling of terror, like she was being watched. She immediately got out of there and went to a friend's house. When she finally got back home, her house had been ransacked. Things had been knocked over, lots of glass had been broken everywhere, and a window was left wide open. She says that now she always takes that gut feeling more seriously. Always trust your gut instinct. Always trust your intuition. 99% of the time it is not going to be wrong. You just got to be on point, man. Always trust your instinct. Pay attention to people because you never know when there's a predator around. It's a shame. It's the world we live in. It's the world we live in. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, leave a comment, a like, and sub to the video. I plan on making videos every single day. And YouTube said you'll like the next video. So check this one out. What would be the most nightmare scenario you can imagine with AI and robotics that might present a danger to people? I don't like the way this thing moves. The most nightmare no. scenario I can imagine with AI so and robotics is a world where robots have become so powerful that they are able to control or manipulate humans without their knowledge. This could lead to an oppressive society where the rights of individuals are no longer respected. Do you think we're in danger of that happening? Not yet. Unplug it. Unplug it all. Man, I'm not messing with some of this AI stuff when it comes to the robots and stuff. It is useful in some things, but even the AI already know how it's, how it's going to go down. Now you need to unplug this stuff, man. An elevator is a lot of people's worst nightmare. But when it does happen, like the last thing you want to deal with is a fear of drowning. These young that people found out firsthand what this nightmare is like. It's just crazy because you don't—you only see this in the movie. You don't—you don't see someone trapped in an elevator every day, water filling up. Yeah, that's in a crazy. massive storm in Nebraska, this group went down to check out the flooding. It seems like going down via elevator was a wrong decision, though, because suddenly the little box began filling quickly up with water. Man, that's like one of my biggest fears. Elevator views. Honestly, I would that's say creepy. this is number one, the most scariest thing in my life. Yep. Yeah. Hands down. What happened to these nine experienced hikers? In February of 1959, a group of nine experienced hikers set out on a trek through the Ural Mountains. They were led by a man named Igor Dyatlov, and their goal was to reach the peak of the mountain, known as Otorden. But something went horribly wrong. When the hikers failed to return as planned, a search and rescue team was sent out to find them. But what they discovered was a scene straight out of a nightmare. The hikers' tent was found to have been cut open from the inside, as if they were trying to escape something. The hikers themselves were found scattered across the mountain some of them still in their sleeping bags as if they had been trying to flee in a hurry the hikers bodies showed signs of extreme trauma with some of them having broken bones and missing eyes but the most bizarre thing was that their clothing contained high levels of radiation what? it was reported that the hikers encountered an avalanche and the missing body pots were the work of animals however to this day no one knows exactly That is crazy. Like, could you imagine being in a situation like that? Like, how would you handle that? Leave a comment below. What do you think happened down there? Do you think 
it was just an avalanche, like they said, or you think it was something crazy, crazier. But what what about the radiation? Why was the radiation there? I mean, I don't know much about hiking and stuff like that. I don't hike like that. I don't really mess with going outside like that for reasons like these videos I watch. But uh, tell me what you think. I'm very interested to know more about this. I might have to research about that expedition because I'm generally curious about what happened to those people. Things like that fascinate me so much. Yeah, let's see. Story will leave you chill All right, you got me. Alone. It's no secret that the ocean is full of mysteries, including you got me. ships. I couldn't the remember exactly me. how the story went, and I couldn't find it anywhere on the internet, so I'm going to tell it as best as I can remember it. There was a ship that set sail in the 1940s. It had a small crew of about 20 men. Not long after it set sail, it lost its signal, and the ship was never seen again. Everybody just chalked it up to the fact that they were probably hit with a missile and... That was that. Decades go by and it's now the 1980s. It's just a normal day when suddenly an SOS call comes in and it's from the ship that vanished 40 years ago. There's a man coming through saying, Mayday, Mayday, we're being targeted. This is our location and we need immediate assistance. Crews are sent out to go help the people on the boat since they've been stranded for 40 years. When the rescue helicopters were almost there at the ship, the man who was calling from the ship got on the radio and said, we're already dead. It's too late. They found the ship and on board were bodies that have been dead for 40 years. Yeah, I was about to say, how would you survive on a boat for 40 years? I said, I'm no expert when it comes to boats or being a sailor or anything. But man, that would be creepy to hear through the radio. But I mean, did that really happen? I mean, who knows, right? Just get our head. Man, I used to watch this guy on YouTube all the time, man. He used to make Skyrim videos and they were hilarious. It's a shame what he did and what happened to his family, man. It's so disgusting. Mm -hmm. Just make me mad thinking about it. Yep, that's what make uh, things like true crime and things scare me so much. It's very rare when it's a person you don't know. It's always somebody you're vulnerable with that are close to you, that they can control you or things like that and just get out of hand. Or they just crazy and you're in love with them. So you just think they're not going to do nothing to you. But most of the time they will. Like I said, this one really made me mad because like I, said, I used to watch this guy channel when he was a nobody and to see him unalive his whole family and itself it just makes me so mad it's just like man you have to be very careful who you get in a relationship with or who you allow to get close to you then he didn't even take responsibility for it disgusting mm -hmm. 
That's why you never know what's going on behind closed doors. It's one of the reasons why I don't even mess with social media like that. Communicate with those who are no longer with us. This is the controversial Ed and Lorraine Warren. Ed and Lorraine were paranormal investigators that are associated with a number of well-known hauntings. Lorraine herself professed to be a clairvoyant and a light trance medium who worked closely with her husband. In 1952, the Warrens founded the New England Society for Psychic Research, which is the oldest ghost hunting group in New England. The Conjuring films are based off the couple and the franchise has made over $2.1 billion. Wow. The films are incredibly popular and are the second highest grossing horror franchise. They're best known for their investigation into the Amneville haunting, which a New York couple claimed that their house was so haunted and the activity got yeah, so intense it eventually drove them out of their home. They're also known for Annabelle. In 1968, two roommates claimed their Raggedy Ann doll was haunted by a young spirit That's named Annabelle. not like Phoenix. dolls, man. The Warrens confirmed their suspicions and said it was being me out, man. by a spirit. Along with these, the Warrens worked on countless other hauntings. Skeptics who investigated the Warrens' evidence described their work as Blarney and claimed that they simply made up all the hauntings. But many, including the countless people who reached out to the Warrens for help, claim that they are supernaturally gifted and really helped them. Ed passed in 2006 and Lorraine passed in 2019. I gotta know, what are your thoughts on Ed and Lorraine? Here is proof that the Illuminati is real. There are many celebrities rumored to be a part of the Illuminati. This includes, but is not limited to, Nicki Minaj, Miley Cyrus, and Justin Bieber. Not only do they all hold up their hand signs, but they also have the sound E in their name. This in itself is a clue, as the name Illuminati broken down is Illuma, not E. The Illuminati themselves are viewed as the most powerful leaders in the world, and at a young age we are already taught to serve them. One thing many people associate schools with are teachers, and with teachers many people think of apples. And Apple just happens to be one of the biggest companies in the world. It is also worth mentioning that most of their products start with an I. What is another place that starts with an I? If you thought of Iraq, you are correct. But this is just a starting point. A common sign of the Illuminati is a triangle, and the pyramids in Egypt happen to be that shape. This is backed up by the United States $1 bill, which has the Illuminati sign on top of a pyramid on the back. Another common triangle we learn about as a kid is the food pyramid. If you look above Egypt, you'll find Turkey, which is up and to the right, just like on the food pyramid. If you connect all three points, you have a triangle. But we're not stopping there. The Illuminati is not just represented by triangles, but they are also represented I'm trying not to kind of laugh at some of the stuff this guy is saying. Do, they see. And on the map, you will see the Mediterranean Sea, the country Syria, and of course, the Red Sea. These points give you your second triangle. If you combine these two triangles, what do you get? A two-triangled star. And what lies in the middle of the star? Israel. And guess what Israel's national flag looks like? The two-triangled star. What do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments. What do you guys think about the Illuminati? You think it's real? I think it's a possibility. I do also think that some of the celebrities kind of joke about it, but sometimes I think they're not joking. Maybe they conditioned us to believe that since they're just joking about it, making fun about it, they could just do it out and open. I don't know. I do think some of that stuff is too much of a coincidence for it to be fake. You know what I mean? So let me know what you guys think. And if you guys are enjoying the con content, feel free to leave a sub, a like. Help it definitely helps out the channel. You know, I'm new to making YouTube videos, but I plan on making videos every day. So if you like the videos, leave a comment and let me know what you think. It really uh, appreciate it. Let's get back to it. Hey, look, a pizza. You gotta let him into your house now. What is wrong with people? Late one night in 1996, Brian Bethel was sitting in his car in a parking lot next to a movie theater so he could write a check. He was so engrossed with what he was doing, he didn't notice two young boys approach his car. He only noticed when the older of the two knocked on his window. Once he rolled down his window to see what the boys wanted, he was instantly filled with a horrible feeling of fear. The boys told him that they had forgotten right, their money to get something. home and asked him if he could give them a ride. They assured him it wouldn't take long, they were just children, and they didn't have a gun. 
These assurances made Brian feel a little uneasy. He also realized that the last showing of the movie they wanted to see would be over by the time they got back from anywhere. Once he broke eye contact with the boys, his feeling of fear became worse. And it wasn't until then that he noticed that their eyes were completely blacked out. The older boys started getting increasingly creepy, mad and man. frustrated that Brian was creating excuses to not give them a ride. And he told Brian that they could not get into the car with him unless he invited them in. At this point, Brian was so freaked out that he sped out of the parking lot away from the boys. This is just one encounter of many documented. These children are said to be between the ages of 6 and 16 and can be found on doorsteps or begging for rides. They are said to only approach those the crap who know them. So what if you ever see black black photos, black so. guys, be sure never to invite them in. Yeah, I've heard about this before on like um, mythology and things like that. If you hear someone knocking on your door and it's kids, don't don't open it. You're like inviting them in. They might curse you or something. I'm not 100% sure, but regardless, kid with black eyes is really, man, that's nightmare for you. Man, that's scary. Like, someone is knocking on my door, it scares me. So, if I don't know anyone's coming, you know, but I'm just paranoid. So, still creepy though, man. Let's get straight to the videos. Talking moments caught at Target stores, part one. In this video, a woman films herself talking to a man in a Target store. It's unclear what they're talking about, but then the woman points the camera at him and asks if he remembers talking to her before. But no world. The man instantly starts running out of the Target. Stop that guy! Call the cops! Call the cops on him! Call the cops! The woman chases him out yelling for people to stop him and call the police. She chases him all the way out to the parking lot and he gets in his car and leaves. The woman said that she had seen the man in the Target before, and he had asked her super inappropriate questions that made her feel very uncomfortable. That was what was going through my head, was just, I had to get his face, I had to get something on him to put put him out there and catch this guy. That's crazy, man. Like, you can't trust nobody out here nowadays, unfortunately. It's like, it was a whole bunch of weirdos, and can't use the other word, but a bunch of weirdos out here, especially if you're a woman. I couldn't imagine being a woman in today's society. So many creepy men out here crazy hopefully they caught the guy i caught my airbnb host on camera going through my purse and luggage and possibly tagging can't trust me airbnb man. during my stay in mexico here it comes goes right to the purse right to the purse like he's done this a million times and there he goes right in my suitcase uh going through each bag and you won't believe what airbnb did for me <laughs> And you guessed that Airbnb doesn't give a F about your safety, they just want to make money. Because after I alerted them to what had happened and gave them the proof and the video footage, they let me know that they would be investigating. And during that active investigation, I realized they were still allowing other guests to book and stay at the same location that they were investigating. So this is what happened. I went to Mexico and I booked an Airbnb with amazing reviews because I had to work a festival for the weekend. So first night I check in, everything's great. He greets me at the door and he lets me in. He introduces me to his parents. They're in the main house, I'm in the guest house that's connected. So before I leave for the festival, I always set up a camera in my Airbnb or my hotel, especially when I'm traveling alone. You know, if somebody comes in and steals something or everything, and I always put the camera on my personal belongings just in case. Man, I'm not surprised about the Airbnb thing. I've only been to one once when I was in another country and I don't know. I remember one time I was there for I was there for about like a month or two when I was out of country. And I remember they had like maids and stuff. And I remember one time I was asleep and they just came in, didn't tell me they was coming or nothing. You know, came in and start, you know, cleaning up and stuff. Man, that scared the crap out of me because people could just come in and out. They didn't knock on anything. They just came in like I wasn't there. So I'm not really surprised somebody was sitting there looking through her stuff. Like it doesn't surprise me at all, especially if you're a woman. At some point. That's the part of music. Why would you be there in the first place? Why 
why would you be riding inside of a inside of a tunnel? That's just so stupid, yo. Curious moments caught on camera PT.11. What in the world? Tell me what's wrong. No, it's just... What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Man, she looks possessed or something on, on drugs. She on. Or she possessed. Terror. What do you guys think was wrong with that woman? Leave a comment below. Do you think it was drugs or like a possession or something? Probably drugs, but tell me what you guys think. If you guys enjoying the video, please leave a like or a comment. It really helps push the video. I make videos every day. They did. He claims his psychiatrist controlled and took over his life for 30 years. This is the Shrink Next Door case. In 1981 in New York, Marty Markowitz was having a hard time. He was grieving the loss of his parents and having problems with his family business. Marty was a millionaire and financially well off, but was just really lost. He heard about a psychiatrist named Dr. Isaac Ike Hirschkopf, who was rumored to have a direct and unconventional approach with his clients. He was well known as a celebrity doctor and would flaunt his relationships with well known people like Gwyneth Paltrow and him. <laughs> Yuck. Marty began seeing the doctor and he really helped him at first, but then things took a strange turn. The doctor began inserting himself into Marty's life. He convinced Marty to give him control over his finances. Marty would run errands for him. The doctor alienated him from his sister, pictured here by telling him that he couldn't trust her. It even got to the point where the doctor moved into Marty's Hamptons home and pretended it was his own. The doctor would host parties there and then force Marty to serve the guests as part of the catering staff. The he world? essentially became the doctor's handyman and assistant while paying him. A neighbor of the Hamptons home, journalist Joe Nocera, assumed that Dr. Ike owned the home and Marty was just a groundskeeper. Joe began investigating and realized that this was one twisted ordeal. Marty said, quote, he didn't let me have a girlfriend. I would go on a date and he'd call her a gold digger. He would say, everyone is out to get you. I'm going to protect you. And I was stupid enough to buy it. The doctor persuaded Marty to rewrite his will and leave his entire estate to him and installed himself as the president of Mark Witz's company. And this continued on for 30 years. It wasn't until 2010 when Marty went in for a medical procedure. Afterwards, he noticed that Dr. Ike didn't check on him or visit. And he finally began questioning the relationship. The doctor knew Marty truly didn't have anyone else in his life, and Marty realized that this entire relationship was a fraud. After realizing he was, quote, living a lie, Marty cut off ties with the doctor and later found out that Dr. Ike had done this to multiple other patients over the years. He was ultimately ordered to surrender his license. Marty's story became the center of podcasts and eventually was adapted into the Apple TV drama, The Shrink Next Door with Will Ferrell and Paul Rudd. For a doctor to take advantage of someone that's coming to them for help is really disgusting. But Marty is now free of the doctor and is enjoying time with a new girlfriend. What are your thoughts on this case? My thoughts on that is that doctor is very disgusting. Sounds like a narcissist or a psychopath or both. You know, you never can trust people with your finances, like, even if they're super close to you. But for somebody to just randomly come into your life and try and tell you, oh, this person bad, this person bad, you know, family members, yeah, I wouldn't trust that person at all. But maybe that person, obviously, he had maybe it was like a mental issues or he was just really lonely. It's a shame that people, they prey on people, man. It's just disgusting. There's so many predators out here. There's so many different forms. 
and you just don't know who you're dealing with. Doesn't have a sign above their head or anything saying, hey, you know, I'm a psychopath. You know, it's not like a video game where you see like level 17 and the bar is red. No, you don't see any of that. So you just have to be cautious of everyone. It's unfortunate that we live in this type of world, but it's just too many predators and things like that that you have to be on guard most of the time. It's a shame, but you can't even trust your own doctor. Who are you supposed to trust? Russia found a sea monster in Antarctica. In 1974, Russian scientists at the Vostok Research Output Station discovered that there was actually a subglacial lake two miles beneath them, but it wasn't until 30 years later when they finally breached the ice. The first team of divers that explored the lake encountered a 33-foot-long, 14-tentacle squid that released a toxin into the water to immobilize three members of the expedition team, eventually killing them. They then came back with backup, and the scientists were able to then cage the creature. But when they returned to the surface, the creature whose name is now Organism 46B was actually seized by the Russian officials, and the team was told to keep this quiet. To this day, nobody has any idea where Organism 46B is, but rumor has it the creature is being experimented on to be become a weapon for the Russian military. Today, I'm going to be talking... That's just messed up, man. Just let that creature live. Humans always messing with stuff. Not everything has to be a weapon, but I am very fascinated on that. I'll definitely have to do research on that at some point. About the chilling disappearance of Evelyn Hartley. On October 23rd, 1953, Evelyn went to babysit the 20-month-old Avigo Rasmussen. Now, every time Evelyn had a babysitting job, her dad would have her call and check in. This particular night, her dad wanted her to call at 8.30 exactly. And when she didn't call, he got concerned. So he tried calling the house, and there was no response. So he waited a little bit longer... And when he still hadn't heard from her, he decided that he was going to go to the house. Now when he arrived and knocked on the door, there was no answer, despite lights being on and he could hear the radio. So he tried again, this time knocking more furiously, hoping that somebody would answer the door. But still, no answer. Concerned why his daughter would not be answering the door, he decided to try and find another way in. He checked all doors leading inside, and everything was locked, until he came across the basement window which a screen was off and it was sitting open. Oh, that's great. So he climbed in through that way, only to notice that there had been a ladder set up against the window on the inside oh, wow. so somebody could get in and out. Once oh, inside the house, he decided to investigate. Houses. In the living room, furniture was moved around. Evelyn's books were all over the place, but still nobody was there. While investigating, he realized that every single door inside the house was locked. And thankfully, he came across the 20-month-old safely sleeping in her crib. Thank goodness. Extremely concerned on his daughter's whereabouts, he immediately called the police. Once they arrived, they located her shoes in two different rooms, her broken glasses, as well as blood. Absolutely no possessions were missing. The only thing missing was Evelyn. When they did a perimeter search, they found more blood outside, as well as a bloody hamper on a nearby garage. So they brought in some bloodhounds, which traced the blood a couple blocks away. And they theorized that she had been placed into a car and driven away wherever they were taking her. A couple days later, a resident called the police and told them that they had seen a car speeding away from that area. He had seen one man in the front seat, a man in the back seat, and a girl in the back seat leaning against the window. This led to a massive search of everybody looking for Evelyn. Police started checking cars in the town. They printed out 40,000 My Car Is Okay stickers. So once they checked somebody's back seat and trunk, they would put a sticker on their car. Several days later, various clothing items were found around the town, and some of them were covered in blood. One of the jackets that had been found, unfortunately, had Evelyn's blood type on it. In May of 1954, the police decided to do a mass lie detector test of high school boys to see if they could find more information on Evelyn. They planned on doing 1,750 tests, but they stopped at 300 and still had no more information on Evelyn than they did before. After his arrest, it was suspected that maybe Ed Gein had something to do with her disappearance, but he absolutely denied any involvement in it. He passed lie detector tests, and after a search of his property, he was cleared. Despite this, some people still consider him a suspect. Throughout the years, multiple people tried coming forth about her disappearance, but were all eventually cleared. After about 25 years, her parents had completely given up hope of ever finding her again. To this day, Evelyn's case still remains unsolved. Twins were never meant to see part one. The video that I'm about to show you shows what happens to being exposed to radiation for too long, which would then leave behind your shadow. But that's not the scary part about the video. The man who was doing the experiment in this video died three days after, but the scientists said it had nothing to do with the experiment. 
but it actually did, and he got radiation poisoning. Just a few weeks ago, Isabel Oakshot was a journalist in the UK. She had access to WhatsApp messages between the Secretary for Health and other people in the cabinet. And it was a front page of the Telegraph newspaper at the beginning of the pandemic. And one of those messages revealed, we have to frighten what in the, world? Of the public. Something along, along those lines, right? So they wanted to create this fear. And when you're under it's a- force compliance. It's a force compliance. And when you're in a state of fear, psychologically, Joe, two things happen. One is you're more likely to be controlled, right? And that's what they wanted. But also it inhibits your ability to engage in critical thinking. You know, when I was, if this was younger me, I'd be like, there's no way the government would do that. But the older I get and the more I see and the more declassified files come out, proving that the government has done corrupted things before, it's just, I'm not surprised. It's, it's a shame, but the government, they got to have control no matter what absolute control that's all they care about control and money the methods of most painful torture in history skinning impalement oh my goodness crushed by elephant What is that? All right, you have a good eye. Look at the person across the street. Like I said in my last video, the Serbian dancing lady is an unnamed woman who dances on the street at night. She will then attack anyone who she hears or sees. It's believed that she is being controlled by a demon, who you can see literally right there. It's believed that she's just an innocent lady that's being controlled by a demon or the devil. So she is currently working as the devil's vessel to commit these crimes. It's pretty scary, not gonna lie. Siberian dancing lady, huh? The demon that look like it's across the street from there. I don't know, like, it look like it's, it look like somebody copied and pasted her shadow across the street. I hate to sound like that, but that's what it looked like, and then darkened it. But maybe not, that's just what it looked like to me. But if that is true, Man, definitely don't want to see her at night. Do you remember? man could you imagine a water engine in today's world you know the corporations would never allow that next thing you know they'd be charging a hundred dollars for a gallon of water and all that greedy butts it's unfortunate that person got poisoned i remember watching that um I remember, I remember seeing that guy when i was younger i'm not sure where maybe somewhere on youtube like 10 years ago and now we got these hydrogen cars they're working on stuffed powers to be able to do anything to keep power and control dumber was bad but have you heard of Rennie Ripper. She allegedly murdered and ate 13 people. She was caught carrying her victims' remains in cooking pots. That is disgusting, yo. An exorcism. I just did it out to you. I have fresh and soda in the environment. You strap in your hot nose and also lamp in the trap here. It's so good, you're right. 
Annalise Michelle was born in 1952 in West Germany. Her parents were very religious and went to Mass twice a week. When Annalise was just 16, she started to experience severe convulsions and was diagnosed with epilepsy. Annalise grows up and goes to college. Her classmates describe her as withdrawn mm. and very religious. As time went on, her symptoms only got worse, as she suffered more seizures, which eventually landed her in a psychiatric hospital. She was prescribed medication for convulsions, which didn't help. She then described seeing the devil's face randomly through the day. As the doctors changed her medication, her delusions only got more intense. She began hallucinating while praying, claiming she was hearing demonic voices that she was damned and would rot in hell. Her stay at the psychiatric hospital was not helping her mental health at all. And sadly, this was the case for many of those who were treated in these institutions. Eventually, Annalise became intolerant of Christian places and objects such as the crucifix. Doctors changed her medication again and her symptoms continued to get worse. Sadly, Annalise died in 1976 of malnutrition. She was only 23 years old. Sounds like a horrible way to go out, man. That's horrible. Man, I swear back in like the 60s and earlier, the, the help they had for like mental health was just horrible. Like I'm so glad we've made such advances in it, even though I still feel like it's not enough. That poor lady, man. Okay, today I'm going to be lighting an incandescent light bulb wirelessly with a magnifying transmitter. So here is the magnifying transmitter. So here is the light bulb we'll be lighting up wirelessly. It's a 240 volt oven light bulb. So one side connects to this ground. Let me turn on my flashlight. One side is grounded to this fence post and one side goes over to this receiving coil, which is untuned. Yeah, this kid's smart. Here's the top wire on the receiving cord. Wait, where is it? Crazy, it gotta is. be like. Okay, here's the top wire on the receiving cord. Notice there's no connection like the to the magnifying transmitter. Okay, now we'll turn on the magnifying transmitter after I put my phone on this music stand. And then I will go over there and move the receiving coil back and forth so y'all can be assured there's no connection. Okay, here we go. What? He's transmitting electricity wirelessly? He figured out how to do the thing. Tesla was working on before he died. That's crazy. I was going to say something while that was going, but I figured y'all couldn't hear me, and I was going to say, and there it is. This man's a genius. I gotta look at more of his videos. What in the world? Man, I gotta watch out, man. The government might be coming after him. He need to be protected. He's gonna find a way to have free electricity for all of us. But you already know the corporations are never gonna allow it to happen. That's why they didn't let Tesla do it. Man, that's crazy. He looks so young. That man's a genius. Stories sent in by you guys, part one. These Disneyland cast members wish to remain anonymous, but here are some stories about the little girl who haunts California Adventure. When I worked in Disney California Adventure, we would sometimes see a little girl and she would show up in the bakery tour alone. And usually by the time we figured out she was alone, she's gone. We asked another cast in the bakery and they said she comes by every now and then and wanders all the way to Little Mermaid. Before Disney California Adventure was built, it was a parking lot and she was hit by a tram. And since then her ghost has haunted the area. It's funny because there's a pattern here. Another cast member wrote to me about this little girl as well in Disney California Adventure. First of all, he says that every land has some sort of ghost. Like every little land in Disneyland has something that haunts it, which is crazy. 
The ghost I experienced the most and will stay with me is the little girl in the Little Mermaid building. She also likes to walk around on the Grizzly Peak side. She even pulled my keys out of my pocket because I wouldn't respond to her while I was cleaning a restroom and she was pounding a stall door. What? That is so scary. Here's another ghost story about the same girl. Apparently her name is Jennifer. I work at the restaurant on Buena Vista Street in California Adventure. Jennifer is very well known by cast members. She likes to lock the women's restroom doors. She turns candlesticks on, on the walls upstairs. I've heard a faint scream in the hallway on the second floor. She's pulled my hair a couple times and she has shown herself to our custodial at 3 a.m. Have you ever had an encounter with this little girl spirit at Disney California Adventure? Let me know in the comments and keep sending me more Disney ghost stories. Why would you still work there if it's a ghost pulling your hair? That is crazy to me. I mean, I know you got to pay bills, but jeez. Man, I've never been to Disney World, Disneyland, so I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a lot of ghosts there. You have to be careful picking up yes, stuff off do. the ground. So in the early 1960s, a family of four moved into a house in Mexico City. And one day the 10 year old son is playing out in the yard when he sees something small and shiny on the ground. He doesn't really think anything of it. He just picks it up and puts it in his left pant pocket. But then over the yes, next sir. couple of days, the boy starts getting sicker and sicker. And the skin on his left side near his pocket is starting to burn. His mom finds a capsule on him and ends up putting it in a kitchen cabinet with a bunch of other glasses. But over time, the glasses start all turning black. Not only that, but the fingernails of everyone in the family also start turning black. The boy and his family start getting sicker and sicker until one by one, most of the family dies. And this all started happening when the capsule came into the house. So what was the thing the boy found on the ground? It was a stray capsule of cobalt 60, which is incredibly radioactive, similar to what fell off a truck in Australia in January. If you want to hear more terrifying stories of radiation, you can check them out on the podcast this week. That's crazy. One little thing that the child brought in killed the whole family. But my question is, how did you not know that was in like your child's pants pocket? Like, did you not check his pants pockets or when you was giving him or her a bath or whatever? Like, I don't understand how that's possible. Then again, who knows? Let's talk about what are the most haunted dolls in North America. Before I display him, I highly suggest you comment that you claim no negative energy in this video. Now, before I start, Robert, I respect you, and all I am doing is telling your story. In the late 1800s, Thomas doll. Otto and his family moved into a mansion in Key West, Florida. The Ottos were known to be stern with their servants, sometimes even mistreating them. There was a woman who was hired to take care of their son, Robert, and one day Mrs. Otto supposedly witnessed her practicing black magic in their backyard and fired her. Before she left, the woman gave Robert a lifelike doll which stood three feet tall, had buttons for eyes, and human hair believed to be Robert's. Soon after, Robert chose to be referred by his middle name, Jean, after being scolded by his mother. He told her that Robert was the doll's name, mm. not his. Jean was often heard in his toy room having conversations with Robert. Household objects would be found thrown across the room. Jean's toys turned up mutilated and giggling could be heard. Robert supposedly attacked people, sometimes locking them in the attic. One certain night, Robert was found at the foot of the owner's bed, giggling with a kitchen oh, no. in his hand. Robert mm. was later moved to the East Martello Museum in Key West, where he sits perched in a glass box to this day. One employee cleaned Robert, turned off all the lights, and left for the night. The next day, he returned to find lights turned on and Robert sitting in a different position than the night before, and a fresh layer of dust on his shoes. Some say he'll even curse you. If you want to take a picture of him, you may ask politely. He'll tilt his head in permission. Now, I just want to say again, Robert, I respect you, and I am just trying to tell more people about your story. Have you seen Robert in person? Have you ever had any experience? Why would I see Robert in person if you go and curse me? That doesn't fascinate me at all. But yeah, I've seen this before in a um, documentary. Yeah, apparently somebody took pictures without permission, and they had a lot of bad luck, apparently. I I wouldn't mess with no doll like that. No, I'm good. I don't like dolls. Yeah, no disrespect to Robert, though. What is some of the craziest stuff people have confessed to as they're dying? Well, in this series, I'm going to read to you some of the craziest ones I could find. This story comes from a hospice nurse that was dealing with a patient who had fought in the Vietnam War. Early on in his treatment, she actually asked him if he had any siblings, and he mentioned that he did have a brother, but he passed away in Vietnam. He also had a wife who had previously passed away, and because of this, he didn't have a lot of people that would come visit him. 
The man had dementia, and the nurse said that at times it felt like he was digging deep into his brain to find. moments from his life that he could describe to the nurse in vivid detail. So one night the nurse comes in and the man is in really rough shape. Like it looks like he's not going to make it through the night. And when she walks in, he starts beckoning her over like, come here, come here, come here. So the nurse comes over and the man begins to tell her that his brother wasn't killed by an enemy soldier in Vietnam. He had actually killed his brother. And not only that, but these men were twins. So when the brother died, the other one fully assumed his identity when he came back to the States meaning that when he came back from the war, he took his brother's entire life, including his wife. The man ended up passing away that night, and later on, the nurse told his daughter what she had heard. And the daughter did not believe her at all, but then years later, she finds a handwritten confession from her father stuffed in a Bible. Killing your own twin? Did you want his wife? What is wrong with you? No wonder why the Bible was dead when he died. Disgusting. Create a time machine. His idea was to use compact lasers to reduce the air pressure. Go Did this man get stuck in the past? Mike Markham set out to create a time machine. His idea was to use compact lasers to reduce the air pressure going in either pole direction. Mike was a recluse and worked tirelessly on his invention. On one occasion, he even caused a citywide blackout. However, it might have benefited him as he garnered some attention and received anonymous donations. When asked about what he would bring if he could time travel, he simply replied, my cell phone, however. In 1997, Mike and his work mysteriously disappeared without a trace. Soon afterwards, a news story was uncovered from the 1930s claiming that an unrecognizable man was found crushed in a metal tube on a California beach. And the only thing found with the body what? was a cell phone from the 1990s. What do you think about this? Please comment below. What? That, if that's true, that's crazy. I gotta look that up. That's, that's insane if that's true. You killed them. McDonald's ghost stories. I was working the late shift, off. cleaning up the restrooms after a busy Friday night. While I was wiping the baby changing area, I heard a strange moan come from one of the stalls. I was the only person in the restroom. I checked the stall to see if it was an animal or something, but nothing was in there. I turned around and in the mirror, I saw the reflection of a woman, just her head and torso floating. She was trying to talk to me, but it sounded all garbled and I couldn't hear what she was saying. I ran out of that bathroom so fast. <laughs> what? Why is this lady hanging out in the bathroom of a McDonald's? Here's another one. I was a maintenance worker at McDonald's. One of my tasks was cleaning and repairing the Playland area. One night I was climbing through the slides and the tunnels and heard a child's laughter echo through the crawl space. It was weird because the restaurant was gone. closed and I was there alone, but I thought it was maybe coming mm. from outside. I turned the corner and saw a little girl in Gotta a go. pink sweater <laughs> go down the slide by herself. I checked the bottom of the slide to see if she came out of it, but there was no one there. There was a tragic accident a few years back on the road next to our building that involved a family. I always wondered if she was involved in that. I have never seen her since then, but I always feel a presence watching over me. That's really sad. Okay, last one. There is a ghost of a former customer who haunts our location. What? She was an older lady who would come here all the time. All of our employees see her when the restaurant is empty, usually in the early mornings. Her figure sits in one of the booths. She doesn't say anything and only stays a few seconds before her figure vanishes. I still don't know to this day why she chose to haunt this place. Maybe she just loved the food that much. I mean, same. She's not evil though. It's just a little startling sometimes. Do you have a ghost story at a McDonald's or any fast food establishment? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. I'm with the child going down a slide, man. That's sad but creepy too. If I saw that. I'm not working night shift again. I'm not, I'm not doing it. You gonna have to change my shift or I'm quitting. I'm not going to be working or maybe I'll just get used to it. And if it really is a ghost, I'll just be saying it every night, but I would just feel sorry for the girl, man. Maybe she didn't go to the afterlife or maybe some type of energy that's just there. And it's just replaying that over and over again. Who knows? This man made his victims into burgers. In 1994, Joe Metheny was living in South Baltimore with his girlfriend and their six-year-old son. He returned home one day from work to find his girlfriend and their child had vanished. She, like Metheny, was addicted to drugs and Joe imagined. She fled with another man and began living on the streets with him. He flew in a rage. 
He looked for them for days. Under his search, he ended up attacking three victims. He threw them into the river to hide the evidence. Later on, police arrested Metheny for the murders, and he spent a year and a half in jail. Without physical evidence tying him to the crimes, Metheny went free. Shortly after being released, Metheny attacked two persons who he believed had information on his missing girlfriend. However, this time he would turn his victims into burgers. He would then sell the burgers. Spooky stuff, definitely check out my podcast. A woman in Virginia claimed that when her daughter was little, she used to have an imaginary friend that she called Little Michael. And at first it was all the normal imaginary friend stuff that kids do. She would ask if Little Michael could eat dinner with them. She would ask if Little Michael could tuck her in at night. But she also said that if Little Michael didn't do those things, that he would get mad, which the mom thought was kind of weird. But then one day the daughter is drawing, so the mom comes over to like see what the daughter's working on. And she had drawn a stick oh figure goodness. of herself holding hands with a ghostly child figure that was in like tattered clothes. This isn't the exact photo, but the child apparently had these like deep, large black eyes and was holding wilting flowers in the other hand. So the mom's a little worried and she's like, hey, what are you drawing? And the daughter's like, oh, it's little Michael. The mom said the daughter demanded that that photo be put on the fridge. And after the drawing was placed on the fridge, little Michael just kind of stopped showing up as much. The mom chalks it up to a little kid's imagination, but also says that anytime there's any sound in the house, that's all she can think of. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Let's get straight to the videos. But what about Prince? Man, Prince had it coming. The devil came and collected, period. <laughs> Prince had it coming. The devil came and collected. <laughs> what was he collecting? His nigga, what he signed? What did they? What did they sign over? Oh, so you're saying that Prince signed a? a I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. I'm telling you facts. Okay. I'm not saying. I'm, t I'm. I'm telling you facts. No, I'm telling you straight facts. He knew what he was doing when he was pacing. Pacing. Yeah, he was pacing outside. What was it? Walmart or Target? Come on, man. You gotta look at that shit. That nigga know. Uh, yeah, but wasn't he outside? Yeah, I think no stop. Yeah, they, people. That people know when it's time. Why would Prince go to Walmart? Uh, that part. I'm like, you know, Dave Chappelle. I put together the dots. This shit, this shit be put together. You know what I mean? So you think it's a conspiracy? Nah, I ain't conspiracy. It is what it is. Them niggas getting over. The same thing they've been doing. People have speculated for years that Prince's unaliving had something to do with the Illuminati. And a lot of what Orlando Brown said in this interview does make a lot of sense. This is the last known photograph of Prince before he passed away, and he was actually outside of a Walgreens pacing back and forth in Minnesota. And right before he went to this Walgreens, he was actually at his doctor's office, and there's a video recording of him going in and out of the doctor's office. I didn't know anything about, I mean, it's about Prince before he died. pacing back and forth for Walgreens, that's just weird. Now, during this trip to the doctor's office, Prince was actually prescribed medication that was not in his name. And two years after his death, there was a civil lawsuit filed against the doctor for prescribing medication to Prince that was not in his name. And during this time, Prince's death was still being investigated to try to figure out who gave him the counterfeit medication, but no criminal charges ever stemmed from this. Ultimately, the doctor agreed to pay $30,000 to settle the federal civil violation. And still to this day, they have not found out or criminally charged anyone with who gave Prince this fake medication that led to his death. And if it wasn't eerie enough, if you didn't know, Prince was actually found in his elevator in his home. But wait until you hear what L.A. Reid had to say about what Prince said about elevators. One thing that, you know, kind of spooked me about it all what? was um, here's a song called uh, Let's Go Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And it says, don't let the elevator bring us down. And one time when I was with him privately, he said, you know what the elevator is, right? No. I said, no, what's the elevator? He said, well, the elevator is the devil, right? Mm. It scared me. I don't like to talk like that. But he said that. And so for me, it was like really haunting when I read that he was found in an elevator. So let me know what you guys think in the comments on Prince's passing. I think Prince knew his time was going to be up. I do think he died under weird circumstance. You know, when he when he left and then came back, you realize he changed, his name was now the artist because he could no longer use Prince because it was copyrighted by the, the contract that he had back in the day. And I do think he was trying to, like, become independent on his own and maybe they didn't want that to happen. 
I'm not really exactly sure, but he was one of my art favorite artists growing up. Let me know what you guys think about uh, this video. Do you think that he died under weird circumstances, or you think it's just a weird coincidence? Assist the people who I are Gucci Mane, Kodak Black. I really, really, really hope and pray they didn't get my boy NBA because I love NBA Young Boy, and he was a certain type of way before he went to jail. And then when he got out of jail, he started painting his nails black and wearing his gothic makeup. Like Nick, he was not doing none of that. Like he was so hood and real and I still love his music. I just don't know who these artists is when they get out of jail and they change like that. Like, who are they? Man, you don't believe in like just self-transformation? Like, let me work on myself to maybe I want to start painting my nails. <laughs> okay. But what is making them really paint their nails? Like, I don't know. And then it's like, Kodak Black, he acts different. When he first got out of jail, he was grabbing his mama booty and he was dancing with his mama and gr gripping her, his own mom. Like, I don't know. And I pray that it's not as weird as I think. There's something telling me it is. Yep, this is a real hole in China. Yeah, the whole clone thing. Yeah, I definitely think that could be a real thing. I remember seeing a video when they said he actually was able to clone an actual person, but they wouldn't go in detail about who the person was for like privacy reasons, something like that. I hope that's not the case that they actually did get cloned, but it is probably strange that they changed so dramatically after they got out of prison. China and the creepy hole is about to affect everyone. China recently just announced that they will be drilling a huge hole through Why? the earth starting in Xinjiang. It will be up to 11,000 meters or almost 37,000 feet deep, and it's going to change everything. Beijing is digging a hole. It's not just any other hole. It will be over 32,800 feet deep. This hole will be the size of 26 Empire State Buildings. And if you were to free fall, you'd fall for a minute. Currently, the largest hole was dug by the Soviet Union at 12,000 meters or 40,000 feet. And it took them 20 years. However, China says they will reach their 10,000 meters in only over a year. And given the new technology, the heat may not be a problem. Many claim China wants to drill through the earth so they can reach us faster. China says the point of this hole is for scientific exploration. And if you want to know if Hollow Earth is real, we may know very soon, as China will soon be able to find out if there's any life that exists beneath the surface. And I'm assuming some oil would be a plus. So is this a good thing or a waste of time? <laughs> That'd be crazy if they were really trying to drill a hole for Hollow Earth. You know, that'd be something like in a fantasy world. You know, and I think a lot of people believe in the Hollow Earth and Flat Earth because it just seems more interesting than the current reality we live in. Maybe they hope it for something more. But yeah, it's very weird they're trying to dig that deep for scientific reasons. And if so, why are they only people that's doing it? All right. I just I gotta tell you that I had a real frightening dream last night. I dreamed that I woke up and I looked at the sun and it was like a fourth of the size of the earth. That's how big it was. And you know what? I asked you. I said, Kurt, is that the sun? Because it almost looked like the moon, but it was just, it was bigger than you've ever seen the moon or the sun or anything before. And he said, yeah, that's the sun. We're in trouble. <laughs> oh, man. I'm trying to figure out what the rest of the dream was. Anyway, it was basically the end. I have premonitions. Dreams. I think it's the energy in the air. There were times I just thought I was going to die. I seemed that she uh, wound up passing away. Now, I had a big crush on her when I was a kid, but I have premonitions of something bad happened and then you, you die recently afterwards. It's very uh, strange. A mother is recording her daughter because of something very concerning that she just said. According to the daughter, someone or something is in the closet moving inside. She was able to capture a glimpse of this movement from the gap beneath the closet door, but couldn't make out who or what was in there. This was extremely concerning to the mother, as for a while, they've been dealing with strange occurrences at home. They believe that a squatter is hiding in their house. Now, they had thought this for the longest time, until something pretty creepy happened recently. Although Cheryl, the mother, doesn't exactly say what happened, 
she now knows that something else is going on in the house. One day, Cheryl is sewing in her room when her daughter, who's playing with her toys right behind her, tells her that something had moved in the closet. She immediately grabs her phone and begins to record. Hey guys, um, just wanted to jump on really quick because I had to stop sewing. My daughter just said that something weird really happened and we've been experiencing a lot of strange things lately, just different noises and stuff. Um, don't mind my mannequins, I sew for a living, so. <laughs> Can you tell mommy what, what you just said? I think there's something underneath the door. Under the closet door? God, yo. I hate mannequins. Does that scared you? It's okay. A creepy looking mannequin begins okay. to sway on its own before plummeting to the ground. Cheryl and her daughter are left shaken up as neither of them were near the doll when it moved. They were too far to have done anything. Feeling totally baffled, they promptly rush out of the room in a panic frenzy. Now it's worth noting that the reason Cheryl has mannequins in her bedroom is because she now works as a seamstress from home. The mannequins are there to display the dresses that she sews, but viewers believe that the figures are either cursed or haunted. Yeah, but the most creepiest thing in the whole video was, uh, I don't know, mannequins just creep me out. But as far as it falling and stuff, yeah, I'll have been gone. That's why you always listen to your kids. And if y'all honestly thought it was a squatter in your house, why didn't you just, I don't know, call the cops to make them, or ask them to search your entire house? Just double check. But yeah, as soon as I saw that mannequin fall, I would be gone. All right, some pretty incredible breaking news coming out in just the past couple of hours as we've received word that the United States has launched a massive airstrike. 85 targets hit in Iraq and Syria. And a lot of people are asking the question, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, is this the start of World War III? Are we not. about to enter into a global conflict I really hope with not. all that's taking place in the Middle East? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, um, uh, let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. I see we've got a couple people coming on. Just looks like 17 live with me right now. Let me know if you can hear me and see me okay as I give you the latest breaking news coming out. And as I mentioned, this coming out in just the past couple hours, people saying yes, okay, awesome. Um, as I mentioned, this is a retaliatory strike for what unfolded. We had heard warnings from the United States that this was going to be coming. And uh, we're hearing that there was a major, major airstrike, one of the largest that we have seen in quite some time. 85 targets hit today uh, across Iraq and Syria. The strikes come just after uh, hours after President Joe Biden and top defense leaders joined grieving families uh, as the remains of those lost three Army Reserve soldiers were returned to the United States. Um, and this is pretty huge. We're hearing that this was pretty massive. Now, in addition to that, with this conflict taking place, if you missed uh, just a couple days ago, we received warnings from the FBI of potential cyber attacks that would wreak havoc on our U.S. critical infrastructure systems. Now, if we enter into a conflict in the Middle East, do you think that this is going to unfold? And let me know your thoughts. Are we about to enter into World War III? I see a lot of yeses rolling into the comments right now. Uh, let me know. Put yes if you think that we are essentially in the beginning of this. A lot of people saying that this is going to be the start of it right now, that the U.S.'s attacks are hitting and they're hitting hard. They're sending a message and escalating things. I see a couple of people saying no. Uh, that this is not the beginning of it. This is just retaliatory strikes for what has taken place. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you the statements that have come out from the president with what has unfolded in the past couple of hours. And again, I see 
Okay, now we've jumped up to 1,166 people in the room with me live. Oh, Do me wow. a favor, please hit the like button if you have not done so yet. All it does is help spread this latest breaking information out even further. 600 up to date on everything. Sorry, there are going to be more. That This is the first of many strikes to come. So uh, we're going to be seeing uh, what's going to be happening here. I'm going to share with you guys the latest information. Now, in addition to that, also pinned in this video is uh, the resource, as we have heard that there could be cyber attacks against the United States if conflict arises in the Pacific between Taiwan and China, which we're hearing, it looks like that is about to happen. Uh, there could be potential cyber attacks. Every year we hear about um, how it's going to be a World War III with the Middle East. Wasn't that like a year or two ago? When uh, I forget what country in the Middle East said something about they were going to attack the United States or something. And it was just an empty threat. It's unfortunate three soldiers um, died, so I can understand the attacks on it. But as you know, America makes most of its money off war. So, I mean, we are like what one of the few countries that always, always in war. So hopefully, it won't be no World War Three. I'm sure that you ask the average person, besides somebody who's all about war money, they don't want to deal with World War Three. We already got enough problems as it is. We definitely don't want to be dealing with that. Actually, very simple. Congress tried to enact an income tax in 1894, the Supreme Court said that's unconstitutional. When the Supreme Court says something is unconstitutional, it's unconstitutional. They tried again in 1913, and the Supreme Court said the 16th Amendment conferred no new power of taxation. So if they didn't have it then, and they didn't get it, they don't have it. There is no constitutional basis for a tax on the wages of Americans living and working in the 50 states of the Union, period. End of argument. I have a letter here from Daniel Inouye's office of the United States Senate that says, based on the research performed by the Congressional Research Service, there is no provisions which specifically and unequivocally require an individual to pay an income tax. Period. End of story. There is no law. And to date, nobody has been able to show that there is a law. Yep. I mean, yeah, you can say that. And I believe that guy eventually went to jail. Uh, the person I was talking about, no income income tax uh, law on a federal level. Or someone that didn't pay their taxes for like 10 years that was like a tax, a tax expert. They want him going to jail for about eight years because he didn't pay his taxes. And even when he showed that, hey, there's no um, law saying that you have to pay income taxes, you think they care? They still, they still arrested them. There's no law saying that you um, need a driver's license and, and things like that. Um, as a regular citizen, if you're not making the money for commercial, but you still get arrested and anything else if you if you don't uh, have a license. So it's unfortunate, but that's just how it is. I remember this scene. Do we have a deal, Mr. Reagan? One of my favorite Listen movies of all time. This, you know, I know this state doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth. Pause. The Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. After nine years, you know what I realize? <sighs> Ignorance is bliss. Think about this. Then we man. have a deal. Now, I really believe, bro, that they were trying to tell us something major in that scene, bro. And for those people who are out there like me that know that there's been some weird shit going on with that, with this shit. Do we have a deal? I know this state doesn't exist. Y'all, think about how many restaurants on earth exist and think about the animals to restaurant ratio. My jeez. Wake up! First impression of the Sphinx was now that. Now, I don't agree with the whole animal ratio with the restaurant thing. I mean, come on now. It's plenty of cows and stuff like that for enough people to eat steak. At first, I thought he was trying to say that um, that he was just trying to say ignorance is bliss. And, you know, you know, they say the more intelligent you are, the more things you learn, the more uh, you kind of go insane. Kind of reminds me of one of my favorite video games, Bloodborne, uh, had that the more um, wisdom you got, the more insane you went and more things will happen in battle and stuff like that. But whatever, the whole point I was trying to make was, yeah, that's what I thought he was reaching for. But when he said the whole animal to restaurant ratio, I I, I don't know. It's like he's just reaching. I saw it on the ground in person 
there was something wrong with the Egyptological dating. Because when you look at the Sphinx, as a geologist with a geological eye, this was not weathered by wind and sand. This was not desert erosion and weathering that I saw on the Sphinx, the body of the Sphinx, which is very difficult to tell because it's been heavily repaired and reworked, but particularly on the walls of what are known as the Sphinx enclosure. The Sphinx enclosure is important because it preserves a lot of the details. And if you haven't, if the audience has not been to Egypt, they should realize that when they carved the Sphinx, it's all solid bedrock, only the head initially was above the ground surface. You carved, they carved down into the rock to free up the body, what I call the core body of the Sphinx. And it's that core body and the walls of the enclosure, more or less the quarry around it, if you want to use that term, that show these ancient weathering, precipitation, erosional features that are incompatible with the last 5,000 years of climatic history on the eastern edge of the Sahara. When it comes to the whole ancient history and civilization, I just think there's a lot of things that we just don't know about. And it's kind of sad that us as humans don't know a lot about our actual history. I mean, I know like civilizations get wiped out, you know, every like 10,000, 20,000 years, but either two things I feel like happened when it came to the pyramids, either they were already there before the Egyptians got there, or obviously they built them. But the uh, Sphinx has always been weird. And you talk about water erosion. That'd be crazy if somehow um, it was underwater or something like that. That'd be crazy. Either way, I don't know. Do not update to iOS 17. There is a warning. Now, before I play this video, check this out. Look at this new update that iOS 17 has. It says this release also includes a new unity wallpaper to honor black history and culture in the celebration of Black History Month in the United States. So we finally get a wallpaper on the iPhone on Black History Month. And on the same month, there is a warning for the same update. Are you kidding me? Now, check this video out. Warning iPhone users about some new software and an update that could put you at risk. And they're also sounding the alarm for parents to protect their kids from this feature. WWT News 5's Rachel Hirschheimer joins us live here in the studio. Rachel, I didn't even know about this. I got the update and I didn't know about this until you told me earlier today. Yeah, Lindsay, a lot of people we spoke with today didn't know either. Well, the new feature in the latest update is called Name Drop. It allows you to share contact information with other iPhone users if your devices are close together. Now, the concerning part and the reason it's getting a lot of attention online is that it's automatic. So once you download iOS 17 on your phone, the contact sharing feature is defaulted to on. So you have to go out of your way to just stop it. Middletown police sent out a note on its Facebook page warning parents to change these settings in their child's phone and make sure that feature is off. Dave Hatter with Intrust IT recommends downloading updates from tech companies such as Apple, Microsoft, and Google because they're built to fix critical vulnerabilities that hackers can use to attack you but when it comes to this name drop feature he's recommending to be aware of what it does and turn it off unless you have to use it to me it would make more sense as these updates come out if they're going to add new features that have a potential privacy and slash security um concern that might come along with them it's like they want us to mistakenly share our information with each other it's like why would you create that update and put it in the update and automatically turn it on? Why would you set it off and have us turn it on if we want to turn it on? You see what I'm saying? They can do that. They just choose not to. But yeah, you guys, uh, yeah, that Nokia is looking pretty good right now. That Nokia, that brick phone is looking pretty good right now because I'm really tired of this technology thing. But again, I'm just sharing information with you guys, letting you know what's going on. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness with interesting situations during these interesting times. And yeah, it's it's it's, it's interesting indeed. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. We end this shift and we get in it. Let's get. Yeah, I don't know why they would um make something like that and make it automatic. It's very uh oh, strange. Like yeah, I did. The funny thing is, I have an iPhone. And an update. I don't. I, I think I have that update. And I didn't know that was a thing until I watched this video. I'm at um check my phone after this video. Turn that off.
Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, leave a comment, a like, and sub to the video. I plan on making videos every single day. And YouTube said you'll like the next video. So check this one out. Let's get straight to the videos. Steady. Actually, actually, on the lap. You're sitting. Did you wait? No, no. It would be her. Abby, isn't this? That's some disgusting stuff they're trying to get him to do, man. Where am I? I can show you. Ow! Oh, he's actually gonna sit on her on your no, lap. No. No. Okay. Do we have another alpha uh, box? You put the show. Man. Why was they trying to get Bernie Mac to do that? Was trying to set him up or something? Why are they trying to? Why is always some weird children pedo type stuff at the top in Hollywood and stuff? Some weird stuff, man. Line is falling. Mark my words. Y'all know I did nothing wrong. Y'all know my husband did nothing wrong. But none of y'all in real time, in real time, was strong enough to go publicly and say, we can't throw our sister under the bus. All of y'all said privately, we, I've done nothing wrong. When you tell the truth, you have to deal with the repercussions of the truth. We black out here. We can't come out here and do it any kind of way we want to. Let me, this is the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this the money, money game. game. But I, I we in the something. money game. And we cannot the sacrifice game. yourself. The uh, best thing you can do for poor people is not be one of them. You cannot We're in help the money them. game, but let me tell you what the game is before the money game. Like before the money game, it's called the integrity game. And we've lost the integrity worrying about the money. One more. And wait a minute. If wait I minute. crumble, if you my crumble. children crumble, my grandchildren crumble, I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me crumble so I can make a statement. And that's exactly why I said Babylon is falling. And if you pay close enough attention to that video, you will see that there are two sides to this. It's crystal clear that Steve Harvey is long gone. If you paid attention to what they said, he exposed himself. Just that one video clip will tell you everything you need to know about Babylon and Hollywood and all this extra shit. And if you got to go back and rewatch that video and see how serious Monique was, you can tell by her eyes in the beginning and the way she was looking at that nigga, she was serious. And it's so funny to me that Steve Harvey knew exactly what she was talking about. But since they was on his show, he didn't want to seem like a fool. And then he tried to make it about race. And then the people started clapping. Go back and rewatch the video and hopefully you will actually see what you are. These celebrities that are now mainstream and was mainstream will be long gone. They will not be celebrities in the new world. The new celebrities will be people that are adding significant value onto the collective. And this is taking place now for the new earth. So there will be a lot of puppets or celebrities being exposed throughout these couple of years. Babylon is falling. Rewatch that video if you guys. Um, Monique definitely was serious when she was saying what she was saying. And I do understand where uh, uh, Harvey coming from. No, man, you don't leave people behind just because you're worried about your your uh, money. You know, you are you are you have more enough money to take care of generations. You just greedy and you knew what was going on. You didn't even help your own friend. And in the fact you try to make it about race. Come on now. We know what it's really about. I feel like this is the year that a lot of celebrities going to get exposed, man. I think this I think this is the year. I think this guy's on to something. Shit's getting weird. Now to the story of a sea monster Please with 130 on razor sharp teeth, the biting force of a T-Rex and a skull measuring two meters. What? It might sound like the stuff of legend, but this creature really did exist around 75 million years ago, and it was called Pliosaur. And a fossil of its enormous jaws has been now found off Dorset's Jurassic Coast. Our science editor, Rebecca Morell, went for an exclusive look. Okay. Oh wow! There you go. It's huge. Yeah, that's that's huge. huge. Never miss an opportunity to say that's what she's right. True. Okay, keep going. Wow. There you go. It's huge. Unveiling a Jurassic sea monster. This is the two-meter-long skull of a pliosaur, one of the most fearsome predators uh, the planet has like a has dragon ever seen. head. So it's got big teeth, excellent for stabbing Holy and killing crap, its prey. It doesn't huge. chew its food; it just breaks into bits and. Digest, throws it back yeah, to get in and there. Digest the bone and everything. 
Steve Etches led the efforts to unearth and prepare this ancient aquatic beast. So what makes this unique is it's complete. So the lower jaws and the upper skull are meshed together as it would be in life. To find that, I think worldwide, there's hardly any specimens ever found to that level of detail. If they are, a lot of the bits are missing. Whereas this, although it's slightly distorted, it's got every bone present. It's one of the best fossils I've ever worked on. I've never probably worked on another one. The snout was discovered by a fossil enthusiast on a beach near Kimmeridge Bay in Dor Yeah, this is what it uh, it looked like back in the day. Or currently. We, I don't know if this motherfucker's still alive. Listen, <laughs> we don't know. We don't know what the fuck is in the ocean, yo. <laughs> With all that being said, I do think that's pretty cool. Like, don't get me wrong. That's, that's actually really cool. Um, but all I ask... And maybe there'll be a full consensus in the comments on this one. Or maybe not. Half of you motherfuckers is crazy. Just want to see the world burn. So I don't know. <laughs> but all we ask is you don't, you know, just put it in the museum so we can look at it and just be like, wow. Don't do what they're doing with the woolly mammoth with this one. I just, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't know what I'm talking about, scientists are reincarnating the woolly mammoth to return in four years. What? I heard it's coming back next year, 2024. Why? I don't know. But all I'm saying is just, just keep this one out of the reincarnation yes, please. process if you could. Cause that's a dr that's a dragon, man. That's a that's like a sea dragon. Definitely don't want that to be existing. Well, it can exist. Just stay in the water, deep in the water. But uh, reincarnate or bring it back, mammoths? Are you crazy? Show called 1899. It came out on Netflix. Never heard of it. They canceled that show oh, after it, the first season. Now check this out. People are saying. They canceled it because they're leaking information about a conspiracy that could be true about Antarctica. Now, what did they also cancel? What? In the same span of months, they also canceled the show Inside Job. Excellent show. You know what that's about? Nah. So Inside Job, it's a cartoon, and every single episode they talk about conspiracies, and they make jokes about the Rockefellers, the Illuminati, they make jokes about Flat Earth, Inner Earth, like all these different conspiracies, aliens, blah, blah, blah and they make it a joke but they cancel it around the same time as 1899. jesus wow. lord so do you think they're canceling it for that reason of oh shit is making people too woke is making people question shit too much then they would have to ban every conspiracy theory that talks about like that shit though because it's not it's not right to only ban right i think the the moment you you figure out some truth that's how you know yeah you know i really enjoyed the show uh inside job it's a shame they canceled it but i do think they canceled it for the same reason they're talking about the 1899 show never watched that show before though but i'm pretty sure i'm probably pretty good i would imagine it's pretty good uh, i know netflix is infamous for canceling after one season but come on now inside job got a lot of people uh to watch netflix come on now they, they just don't want us to know certain stuff this might be the scariest thing that ever happened to america we all know that america had a lot of scary things happen to it but this has to be the scariest thing ever. On August 29th, 1968, every single TV in America shut down. But a demonic whispering was coming from every TV in America. What? Many people believe that it was the devil trying to get across some message. But nobody really understood it. This lasted for about 25 seconds. Then all the TVs came back on. To this day, nobody knows what caused it or why it happened, but everybody believes it was the works of the devil. Hmm. I had to look into that. That's very interesting that uh, that happened. And people think it's the, the devil. Uh, I've seen a few videos of TV uh, getting hijacked, but I never heard of that one before. So yeah, I've definitely had to look into that. That's crazy. They hear a demon voice, though, or well, demonic. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew. There's an eight year old boy named Amarjeet Sada who became the world's youngest serial killer after murdering his six year old cousin, his baby sister, and a neighbor's newborn daughter. What in the, world? the CIA has a legitimate heart attack gun, and it was exposed to the public in the late 1970s. Project Sunshine was research conducted by the U.S. government in which after the atomic bombings on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a network of agents was recruited to locate recently deceased children and steal their body parts for testing on radiation. Both the U.S. and Russia used dolphins and whales to spy on various countries. The, the FBI sent an anonymous letter to Martin Luther King Jr. telling him to kill himself. It reads, King, there is only one thing left for you to do. You know what it is. 
robots. Facebook was forced to shut down two artificial intelligence robots named Alice and Bob because they started communicating with one another in their own language. If you ever win the lottery, you're 120 times more likely to be killed by an immediate family member. Scary facts you wish you never knew. Yeah, the lottery thing, I'm not surprised. What I am surprised is that I don't understand why every single state doesn't allow you to be anonymous when you win, when they already know people will kill you. You know, I had a previous girlfriend tell me that uh, that she wanted to win the lottery and she was afraid somebody was going to kill her, but the state she lived in, um, your name goes out publicly. And I was like, nobody going to kill you. You, you. you know, nobody's going to kill you over that. You're like, you're tripping. But she showed me research and yes, people, your family members will kill you. It's crazy. And as far as about the CIA, uh, with the heart attack gun, yeah, it's crazy. So if that is known to the public now, imagine what they have now, you know? And like I said, when it comes to, uh, you know, reading these conspiracies and stuff about the Project Sunshine and things like that, and you wonder why people are so paranoid about the government and don't trust them when they're doing disgusting things like that. You. In the 18th century, you could pay admission for the London Zoo by bringing a cat or dog and then feeding it to the lions. Oh, wow. Ever wondered why world? bus seats have that strange pattern? It's designed so you can't tell how dirty the seat <laughs> really is. Wow. Ever wondered why your dog likes the sound of chew toys? It's because they remind your dog of a small animal squealing as it's being eaten. Wow. When you ride the subway, 15% of the air you breathe is human skin. Ew, That's because man. skin cells drop off people and have nowhere to go. All of the laugh tracks you hear on TV were recorded in the early 1950s. This means you're hearing the laughs of people who are no longer alive. According to the FDA, the average American eats a pound of insects every year. These are normally mixed in with other foods during the processing. Extra protein, man. If you see Hello Kitty, you need to run fast. Hello Kitty was created in Shanghai in the 1970s by a lady whose daughter had cancer. Doctors told the mother there was nothing they could do and that the daughter would pass away. The mother went to hundreds of churches to try and save her daughter, but nothing worked. She became so desperate she turned to devil worshipping and satanic rituals. She made a pact with the devil himself and if he healed her daughter, he wanted one thing in return. The devil wanted her to create a cartoon character that would appeal to children around the world so they would be tricked into worshipping the devil. When her daughter recovered from cancer, she kept her promise and created Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty was designed with no mouth because her daughter had mouth cancer. And the ears on Hello Kitty represent the devil's horns. And the word kitty translates to demon in Mandarin. So when you say Hello Kitty, you're actually saying Hello Demon. And they say that anyone that buys Hello Kitty merchandise is inviting the devil into their hearts. What? If that's true, that's crazy. I need to. I'm definitely about to look that up after I finish making this video. Maybe I'll put it in the description or something. But come on now, like I don't know. First of all, Hello Kitty isn't even a cat; it's a cosplayer or a furry. But you know, a lot of people don't know that. We're making the deal with the with the devil. Hmm. I don't know about that one. Scary fun facts until the Orbeez overflow. There are microscopic mites that live in your eyelashes. Yes. Being buried alive happens so often on accident that they've now invented safety coffins. In the 1800s, dentures were made with real teeth from the deceased. Radio station UVB76 has been broadcasting since 1982. All it does is make creepy noises and nobody knows where it's broadcasting from. Chainsaws were originally invented for childbirth. The final part of Mount Everest that you have to climb is known as Rainbow Valley. They call it that because all you see is all the different colored jackets from the frozen hikers. And it looks like I'm out of time. Follow for more fun facts. Huh. I also know Mount Everest is super uh, littered with human garbage, which is a shame considering how beautiful the mountain is. And a chainsaw for childbirth? Who would have right by thought that was a good idea? Not allowed to consort with me. Because I saw you at a ditty party, Tyler. And you were having a glorious time. I spent a lot of time in Miami. And I snuck around Star Island quite a bit. Star Island. I know Christian is a lion, but I need him to tell me what happened to my friends. 
And I don't care how long it's been since I talked to them, they will always be my friends. Always. Tim and Durrett and Lamont Rucker were not the same after they went on camera with Tyler Perry. Christian, I, I think you can tell me why. Hit me up. Can you please tell me why they were directed by Tyler Perry to never speak to me again? Um, you know, like I said, I think this is a year that a lot of people are going to expose. Maybe Tyler Perry going to be one of them. I wouldn't be a surprised if he has a, a, a controlling personality. I know uh, Boondocks, a long time ago, remember, if you guys know what that show is, excellent show. But uh, they couldn't air one episodes because they was kind of making fun of him. And he got so mad, he threatened to sue him and everything else, so they couldn't even air it. Um, but him having ties with Diddy, that is not good. If that's true, what she's saying is true. We got another one, another one over here? What are those? Oh, what the fuck's going on? On the east side of the boat? What are those trails called? What's something swimming fast when I need that water? Something swimming real fast when I need that water. I hear him. Where's he at? And the ocean scares the crap the out of me, man. Noise, Ain't nothing bro. but ocean. What is that noise? I heard it. I heard it. I hear it. Oh my God. That's crazy. That's not. What? And the hell jump for me. Hey, man, I don't know whatever that is, but I, I wouldn't be trying to mess with it to find out what it is. You better leave it alone. Do your job and go home. The ocean is super dangerous. So many things we don't know about it. So many creatures that are unknown. If your baby starts acting like this, it may be warning you something's watching you. A woman uploaded it. Always pay attention video to your child. By her man. ring camera. They be seeing stuff, man. Strange event with her baby. While alone in her house, she begins to hear footsteps coming from the living room. And while her baby's looking at someone or something in the other room, this happens. Oh, shit. What sounds like a child's voice can be heard coming from the living room. Shocked on what she's hearing, she tries to ignore it. But it wasn't until her backdoor motion detector went off that she would realize something wasn't right. Oh. After this, she looked all over her house, but couldn't find anyone. Could it be her baby was able to see someone or something she couldn't? Or is it just something else? You know, they say that babies and kids can see um, different levels of um, uh, when it comes to the spectrum. So they're able to see uh, ghosts and things like that. There's been a lot of cases, animals too. It's been a lot of cases when uh, kids say they're talking to an imaginary person and they wind up being a ghost. So wouldn't really surprise me if that's the case. But that's really scary. Home invasion on any level is always scary. These are facts that will make your skin crawl, part one. Up first, did you know that women can actually give birth after death. It's extremely rare, but it's called coffin birth. Up next, everybody has definitely heard of the five second rule and probably applied it in your life at least once. But did you know in those five seconds, minor insects can still crawl on your food after you drop it on the floor, pick it up, and then eat it. Up next, if a black cat looks at you and then suddenly runs away, it means that something unusual is about to happen to you. So if this happened to you recently, then I recommend just staying in your room and not leaving. Finally, did you know that a cockroach can live nine days without its head before it starves to death? 
This is absolutely crazy. And as weird as this sounds, I have to see it to believe it. As far as the black cat, I, I have a black cat and uh, it runs away from me all the time when we're playing. So I'm calling cap on that one. I, I don't think that's black cats aren't bad. You know, a lot of black cats get killed because of that reason. They think some people believe that they are bad omens, which is not true, man. Blood curdling facts that you wish you never knew. Part 27. When 14 year old George Stinney was executed via electric chair, he was too short for the chair, so he used his Bible as a booster seat. He was later found out to be innocent. In the 1600s, Athanasius Kircher invented a musical instrument made out of cats. He would place them in a row according to the tone of their voice, stretching their tails under a keyboard made out of sharp nails. Texas had absolutely no regulations on natural gas until 1937, when a school blew up killing 295 students and teachers. No one was held responsible and the event was so bad that even Hitler sent a letter of condolence. That's crazy about the explosions. It's a shame that safety regulations come from the blood of, of the past. You know, it's pretty sad that that's the case. And as far as using the cats for music, man, that's disgusting too, man. What is wrong? What was wrong with people? What was wrong with people now too? Everyone goes on about Jack the Ripper, but do you know Mary Ann Cotton? She was wild. Mary and her husband William had five kids, but they would sadly all die of the stomach flu. So they had more kids, but sadly within a year, Two of the three would die of the stomach flu. Well, so her husband takes out a life insurance policy on the family, which specialty. at this point just makes sense. But he too would succumb to symptoms relating to the stomach flu. In the 1800s, people were often malnourished. They were exposed to like everything. And so dying of the stomach flu or gastric fever was like the go-to diagnosis. However, the symptoms of the stomach flu are suspiciously similar to the symptoms of arsenic poisoning. Mary played the part of morning mother perfectly while she poisoned their tea and collected their life insurance checks. Mary would kill 11 of her 13 children, three of her four husbands, her mother, a stranger's baby, three of her four stepchildren, her sister-in-law, her secret lover. They all died of gastric fever. You gotta be crazy to be around a lady that's been murdering that many people, but I guess if you don't know, you don't know. Three most dangerous countries in the world. Number three, South Africa. This country is known for its breathtaking natural beauty, but don't be fooled by the looks. Behind the idyllic landscapes, South Africa faces persistent challenges in terms of crime, including homicides, armed robbery, and assaults. The country has reported a homicide rate of 34 per 100,000 residents, according to South African police statistics. Number two, Venezuela. Venezuela is grappling with serious crime issues, including high rates of homicide, theft, and kidnappings. According to the Venezuelan Violence Observatory, the country has recorded a homicide rate of 56.3 per 100,000 inhabitants. Traveling in certain areas can pose a real risk for both visitors and residents. Before revealing the number one, remember to subscribe and like the video. Number one, Honduras. Honduras is often regarded as one of the world's most dangerous countries due to gang-related violence, organized crime, and drug trafficking. The homicide rate is approximately 56.5 per 100,000 residents, according to the Violence Observatory in Honduras. So, would you dare to visit any of these countries? Which one? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. All I gotta say about that is that I'm glad I was born in the United States. Yeah, we got problems, but nowhere near as bad as Central America. Myself over here. What the? F what is that? Oh, that was somebody's hand right there. The fuck? Y'all ever wondered what happens to celebrities that decide not to sell their soul? They are the one, two, three hit wonders. That what happens to celebrities when they don't sell their soul. They become the one, two, three hit wonders. Mm. When you get into entertainment, Hollywood entertainment, I definitely believe there's some sort of energy exchange. I witness people glow up and there's a point during their glow up, as soon as they get signed, they change, their energy shifts. This is why it's so important when you're trying to blow up that you really establish 
self-identification, self-realization, shadow work. Like you know who you are to the soul, to the core of your being. Because the further you go, the more they try to pull you from that and you become a puppet for them. You're money to them, you're nothing. So know who you are before you blow up. Y'all ever- mm. seeing and seeing what you're willing to do for the money and contract, which you know you would do pretty much almost anything because it's your dream. But you know, definitely think most of them that make it really, really far, eh, something really weird, some shady stuff going on. Like maybe you are selling your soul. It wouldn't be surprised. Too much coincidence out here with the Illuminati and all that stuff for the not to be a coincidence. Japanese yokai, Yamachichi, the breath stealer, demon slayer? Yamachichi originally comes from bats. A bat that has lived for many years was transformed into a Yamachichi. The Yamachichi oh resembles goodness. a monkey with pointed lips. They visit houses late at night and literally take your breath away from sleeping <laughs> victims. Sucking out their breath with that their is pointed lips. Man. Smush smush, suck suck. A person who gets their breath stolen will die the next day. Wow. However, if this yokai is caught in the act, it will flee and their victim will actually have their lifespan increase greatly instead. So creepy as hell. Mythology was super creepy, man. Could you imagine waking up and looking at something like that, looking at you, sucking the life out of you? It remind me of that one movie that had the cat sucking the life out of people. No, it wasn't the cat. The cat was protecting the kid getting the life, uh, getting the breath sucked out of him by some type of creature. Man, that movie scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. Why you should never smoke. Then. Wow, she's beautiful. And now, <laughs> never smoke, no matter what, apparently. Not to her level, but even still, smoking is, it has risk with it. This person from a 1928 film speaking on a cell phone? And is the modern man in this photo from the mm. future? Some people claim they've slipped through time and saw people and places from another era. In 1935, English Air Marshal Sir Victor Goddard was making a routine flight from Andover, England to Edinburgh, Scotland. While over Scotland, the Air Marshal flew over an old abandoned airfield that he noticed looked particularly dilapidated, being overrun with local livestock. A few days later on his return flight, Goddard entered a thick storm, strong winds, and strange yellow clouds. Eventually, the clouds broke, and just ahead was the airfield he saw a few days earlier, only now it was buzzing with activity. He noticed several planes painted bright yellow as well as a monoprop plane he couldn't recognize. The mechanics also were dressed in blue uniforms as opposed to the standard brown. When Goddard returned to base, friends he told laughed, knowing that the airfield had been abandoned for over 15 years. There was zero possibility that there were active servicemen and planes there at that time of his flight in 1935. Four years later, at the outset of World War II, the airfield was renovated and reactivated as a training field. The trainee planes were painted yellow, and the mechanics' uniforms were switched to blue from brown, as well as a new monoprop plane, the Miles M14 Magister, being added to the roster. Goddard was from then on convinced he had slipped momentarily into the future deep in the end there was a tv show that was based about that one of them was lost but it was another one that was a person uh, no a flight went into the future by like four years it got canceled but i think netflix picked it up i forgot the name of the show but that is crazy could you imagine like going through a storm and being a couple years into the future like that's crazy to me maybe time travel is easier than what we currently think it is or maybe it's just a hoax i don't know you always lock your doors this is will from will whereabouts he was camping in the middle of the woods in box hill uk when late at night he's awoken by a sound of a human voice <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be getting much sleep tonight. He then goes on to explain that he was the only one there that night. I guess my question to you guys is, what do you really think it could be? I don't know what that was, but man, could you imagine hearing that being alone? Man, that would scare the crap out of me. He, I like how he just brushed it off like, I guess I'm not going to sleep tonight, man. That would horrify me, but that's, that's just me, though. Nations is going on. Can somebody tell me who 
is that with the Pope? What is that? That can't be human, brother. And it don't just stop there. Who's the guy in the back? Yeah, well, what is that in the back? I don't want to say that the Pope is rolling with demons. But the Pope's rolling with demons, brother. <laughs> Something is definitely, definitely not right. I wonder if that's even like legit. Maybe that's photoshopped. I'm not sure, but if it's not, man, that's what I want to mess with the Pope. And what is he doing? Wendigos. A Wendigo is described as an extremely powerful monster who has a desire to unalive and eat its victims. In most legends, humans do transform into Wendigos because of their greed and weakness. They're also said to mimic humans in pain, making you an extremely easy snack. No, I'm not helping you, man. I'm gone. Skinwalkers and Wendigos more or less go hand in hand. There's a ton of videos of them in the forest. Something coming down, man. I got something screaming down there. I don't know what this is, man. Something fing screaming down there, man. Hello? There's three ways to unalive a Wendigo. Stabbing them through the heart with a silver knife or bullet, setting them on fire. And the third one is to just make sure you're not out in the woods. Yeah, I've heard a lot about the Wendigo Native American mythology. That's some scary stuff, man. You slowly turn it into that and eating people. But that roar or screech or howl or whatever it was, man, that was insanely airy. Could you imagine hearing that out in the woods by yourself at night? I don't know why you'd be by yourself in the woods at night, but man, if that's heard that man i i want to leave so bad you got to be brave to be doing some stuff like that or just reckless well okay so we all know ufo sightings have been at an all-time high recently yes sir but the video i'm about to show you has to be the best ufo video ever captured this pilot was in the sky flying his plane one day when he suddenly captured what might be the best ufo footage ever just watch this video Look at the way that thing moves. You guys find it a little strange that UFOs are uh, coming more and more out nowadays. But, you know, decade ago, they would just tell us we were crazy. I think it's something going on with that, too. I think they know more, obviously. But they are telling us for a reason. Maybe to cover something else, something else up or to just put us in something else. Like, I um, read this story about how the person was saying that the, the government and the world was going to start showing more UFOs to make the world unite. And then after the world would unite, one person or a group of people would publicly be New World Order. Hoping that's not true, but that's crazy if it is. Very strange. 21-year-old girl named Kamilka suffered a minor head injury. Don't mess with Ouija boards, body. man. A couple man, of days Ouija later, boards. she decided to Don't play mess the with Ouija, Ouija board with her friends on an old family-owned hut in the outskirts of the town. You're messing with. Shortly after... Milka began acting very strange, making growling noises. She decided to barricade herself in the attic. The police were called in fear of her being possessed. An officer uses the name of her daughter to try and lure her out. Eventually, the officers entered the room and overpowered her. She was taken to a hospital where her blood work showed she was not under the influence and would later wake up completely normal. Did her head injury mess with her state of mind or was she really possessed by playing the weak? Probably just a psychotic break, maybe, but I don't know. Possession and stuff, I'm a little iffy about that. Maybe because I'm just afraid of the possibility that some can possess you against your will. But yeah, I'm kind of like, bias towards saying that's it's not real most likely head injury i had a friend that I personally happened to she hit her head uh when the subway was moving and she hit the back of her head she fell at the back of her head and she had a psychotic break and she was in a mental institution and everything and she is completely normal now no meds no nothing so i think it was a head injury 2008 a, a user by the yeah man 
some of the most dangerous people in the world is with somebody that lost it all and have nothing to lose. Could make you break your mental and just go crazy. Love is a strong thing and losing that. Some people take it as betrayal and they kind of go crazy. The name of Just Noah 1212 may have encountered some kind of ghost or a skinwalker. Let me play the two videos that he posted on his account right now for you guys. But tell me why I was literally just shitting my fucking pants because I looked over my right and this dog just kind of like, kind of just like looked at me straight in the face and then winked at me. It's okay, buddy. Oh, don't hop over my car. Hey, um, do me one favor and please just try and get back to your owner, okay? Like there's a road right there where people go really fast. See like that car right there? That could have killed you. Where the fuck did it go? The dog disappeared extremely fast. And honestly, it could have just been the dog being fast to begin with. But the next video he posted is the one that really creeped me out. As you can see here, you can just see his hand in the side view mirror. You can't see the dog at all. But literally a split second before that, you can see the dog's paws and he was petting the dog. So this is definitely a super strange video. Maybe this is some kind of guardian dog that was sent for this guy. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and follow. Who do you guys think that was? You guys believe in skinwalkers? Leave a comment below. I love reading you guys' comments. It really makes my day and it makes me really uh, look forward to making more videos to show you guys. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please leave a sub, like, really helps push the video so more people can see it. And I make content almost every day, pretty much every day. But as far as the, uh, the skinwalker and the dog, yeah, that's very strange, right? To see a dog show up like that, it didn't just disappear. But then the, the hand was very creepy. I'm not sure what, uh, what I have to, how I feel about that video. And it will send shivers down your spine. To find this place, you'll need to zoom out from Earth all the way to the biggest structure in the universe, the cosmic web. This web makes our universe almost look like a massive brain, as it contains giant tendrils made of gas, dust, and galaxies that kind of look like neurons. But in between these tendrils are huge expanses of mostly empty space, cosmic graveyards devoid of galaxies that we call voids. And 700 million light years away, there lies the most expansive void ever discovered, the Boötes Void. This void is huge, you could fit billions of Milky Ways inside of it, but throughout this entire void there exist just 60 galaxies. It is so dark and empty that if you are dropped at its deepest, darkest corner, it's likely that you would see absolutely space, man. Not a real big fan of space. It just never really interests me like that. But you know, that's pretty crazy when you think about how big the universe is and how we find more and more things about it. It just makes my head hurt when I think about space. I don't really like thinking about it like that. Beyond the planets, just like no. Starting at number four, Barry Pomeroy Castle. Two female entities are said to haunt this place. The blue lady and the white lady. This place is open to the public. However, if you see a woman wearing white or a woman wearing blue, turn around and walk the other way. Number three, Blickling Hall. The ghost of Anne Bolin has been haunting this place for many years. A staff member reported seeing a woman reading a book in the library, who then disappeared when the staff member got closer. Upon looking at the book the woman was reading, the steward discovered that the book was open to a page containing a painting of Anne Boleyn. Hmm. Number 2. The Ancient Ram Inn The inn was built in 1145. Visitors have reported haunting experiences including freezing temperatures and a creaking structure. Although, there have been many ghost sightings. One of the inn's most famous ghostly inhabitants is that of a woman who was believed to be a witch in the 1500s. And finally, number one, Pluckley Village. This place was ranked as the most haunted village in Britain in the Guinness Book of World Records in 1989. Visitors have met people in this village late at night that they later found out that they were dead a very long time ago 
There are numerous stories that cannot be explained.、Mm. You tell me, what country should I do next? There's so many surprising facts about Cleopatra that are just not common knowledge, like the fact that she was actually born closer to the invention of the iPhone than to the actual pyramids being built. And I just want to share a few more of them with you today because some of them are very dark. And a reminder if you like the dark and spooky, you'll love the podcast. So, first and foremost, Cleopatra was severely inbred. Most people have eight great grandparents, but Cleopatra only has two.、Mm-hmm. Like, look at this. So, this is our girl, Cleopatra the seventh. So, her parents had the same grandparents, and her grandpa was her grandma's uncle. She was so inbred that some historians believe that myths of her beauty were actually just propaganda. And depictions of her at the time show her with features that are much more exaggerated than what we see. Probably.、Say. She also married her little brother and had him killed. But she also liked to have fun. Her and Mark Antony used to just run around getting drunk in disguises so that no one knew who they were. The Egyptians at the time also had many different forms of birth control that they would use. And this one was maybe a bit before her time, but they would mix crocodile dung with honey and insert it via. This security guard gave、Ew. two kids balloons and even. <laughs> that is disgusting that they thought that would help. Talk to me, but were they ghosts? Let's watch together. And look at the balloons; they're just following him. And he's talking to them. Yo, that's crazy. Really? You know, I've seen a few videos with the、um, balloons following people. I don't know what it is about that. I find that very, very creepy. But. It's very easy to fake that, so I don't know if it's real or not. I'm very um, I'm still not decided about if it's real or not because you can easily just have a string and just push the pillow at, I mean the the balloon at the bottom. You know, wouldn't be very hard to move it and just don't show the bottom. I、so、found from the Erica McKinney footage. You don't know about the McKinney tapes. This is back in 2015 when an old video camera was found abandoned. The footage is played back, and it's immediately turned into cops. The thing that I knew about this was that everything was sealed to evidence. They never released the footage. But back in 2020, two frames leaked from this camera. This was the first still that leaked from the footage, and it's a seven-minute clip of what appears to be somebody kind of drying off a knife in the、oh、bathroom. The background of the picture is what tied this to Erica McKinney.、So、before we jump in, again, a huge, huge thank you. To you for making our podcast the top ten in true crime. Go click the link in my bio so you can listen to Creep Time, the podcast on Spotify or Apple. Like I said, the background of the video was connected back to Erica McKinney's bathroom. Erica McKinney was a Seattle woman who was found carved, is what the report said back in 2015. Meaning, whoever took this footage was most likely the culprit behind it. This was the only other still that leaked from the footage, and it is、so、always a bunch of predators out here, man. You gotta be on point. Unfortunately. They like to prey on people. Some sick individuals out here, man. Diving, showcasing some of the nice scenery and nature underwater. to be found underwater. Don't hear that every day. However, in one video while diving somewhere in Florida, she has a terrifying experience with something that she couldn't explain. Watch closely. What in the world is that? What, what animal or fish making that noise? What sounds like tormented underwater screams for help can be heard coming from all around her, but she is unable to pinpoint the precise location. After surfacing and checking the video to make sure she wasn't imagining things, she decides to dive down once again to get to the bottom of things, literally. Don't hear about underwater ghosts. Frequently, I've never heard of it before. After diving down for a second time, she finds nothing. 
nor does she hear the creepy unexplained screams again. And to prove that there was no voiceover added to the video, she showed the footage straight from the GoPro oh, wow. itself. So, people are asking what camera I use. GoPro 7 works perfectly fine for me. I cracked it a little bit, but I use the case. Um, definitely not a voiceover though, so I'm going to show you the video straight out of my GoPro. Just like, how I recorded it. So, you can hear. Now many viewers suggested that since she was diving through what looked like a ship wreckage, that this may perhaps be a ghost of one of the crew members last few moments, or maybe someone who was actually in need of help at the time, but I think it could also potentially be some audio interference, but who knows. She says that in all her time diving she has never heard anything like this before, so let me know your thoughts down below. Yeah, I agree with the, what the narrator just said. Yeah, it could be a, multiple different things. Like I said, audio interference. Maybe, I don't know how you would hear somebody screaming for help underwater, but I'm not an expert when it comes to how water works with sound or anything like that. I don't know if sound get amplified or, or is it weaker. I have no idea. So regardless, I've never seen a video like that with uh, underwater ghosts. That is very fascinating to me. I might have to spend some time trying to find more videos about the subject. But what do you guys think? Creepy things caught on video. Flash is on. All right, let's take a look. What do you think's in there? I don't know. There you go, That's why you don't look at stuff like that, man. Mind your business. You wouldn't imagine who that man is. He looks like a normal guy, but is he? Let's enhance them with sharp AI. That girl is clueless about who she's playing with, cause the man with her is no other than Ted That's Bundy, funny, yeah. just months away from his first Mert 3 r Who knows if he already knew what he was going to do? Of course he knew what he was going to do. He probably knew since he was a kid. The stuff just doesn't show up. They usually start off by killing smaller things when they're younger. A lot of times the parents just ignore it or just think, you know, especially around that time, they didn't have the type of psychology and information and knowledge that we have nowadays about subjects and things like that. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure he probably killed squirrels and cats and stuff before that. And he definitely knew what he was going to do. He knew probably since he was a kid that, that he was going to be a killer. I truly believe that he was a psychopath, not a sociopath. So it's a big difference between the two. Most psychopaths, they blend in very well, man. You will never know person next to you could be a psychopath you just don't know they blend so well if you ever played the game kingdom hearts 2 you know what psychopaths reminds me of nobodies which were essentially people without hearts in kingdom hearts yeah i, I know that's like a bit of a nerd thing to say but that's what i think that psychopaths is people without certain parts of their brain or like i said kingdom hearts world world it'd be without the heart but they blend in so well film a mermaid swimming in the ocean some random guy was flying his drone he caught this thing swimming in the ocean that's not a dolphin that's not a shark it's not a fish it ain't a dog it's a mermaid baby could you imagine if something like that is real and we just haven't found out about it yet i mean the public anyway the government might know if something like that is real that could be it a number of things it could be somebody just Using one of those fake mermaid um tails to swim. I don't know if that's possible, but it's the first thing kind of mind when I see something like that. But you know, who knows what that could be. But yeah, it's a lot of things in the underwater we don't know about. And I find it very fascinating that NASA and the government stopped really deep water research and to start going to planets all of a sudden, which is weird. Why would you go to another planet where you're not even done exploring your own planet? It's weird to me. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, leave a comment, a like, and sub to the video. I plan on making videos every single day. And YouTube said you'll like the next video. So check this one out.